It's fucking Thursday night. I said it's fucking Thursday night. I said it's fucking Thursday night. I said it's fucking Thursday night. I don't know where the other fucking buttons are, but you know what that means? It's wrestling with fucking knuckleheads. We got Cap in the building. What's going on, Cap? Not much, man. Here to talk a little bit of AEW, NXT, World Collide. Some uh, and- some shit coming up. Word and and we're gonna we're gonna talk about Jabba Slam too. What? Not to be known as what? Fuck you. Not to be known as Slobber Jam too. What? What? It's fucking Thursday night out here and we doing our thing. Dream is waiting for you. What? Dream is waiting for us. What's going on, Dream? <laughs> How you doing, bro? Yo, it's fucking Thursday night, man. We only get one Thursday night a fucking week, and you know what that means. And you came out here like the warrior, man. <laughs> Ran down the thing, blew yourself up, and I'll try to have a match. That's right, shit. You know what? But you know what I said to that? You know what I say? I say, like, what's up, danger? Fuck all that bullshit, man. Yo, <laughs> yo, all I'm saying is I'm not going to throw no kicks because I don't want to break my foot like CM Punk did last night. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that works. That 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 kind of that kind of looked like when MVP took the RKO and broke a rib. I don't know, but we'll, <laughs> you know what I'm well, so that, that's something I wanted to bring up because back from my old job, I might have an explanation. Okay, for that. okay, we'll get there. See, look, even Dream is saying supposedly, but yeah, man, yo, we got Edge came back on Monday Night Raw. Trish Stratus came on Monday Night Raw for what? Beth Phoenix. Beth Phoenix was there, yeah, which we might get. Uh, you know, Edge and Beth Phoenix and Ray versus Finn, Priest and uh, Rhea Ripley, because Rhea Ripley and, and Beth Phoenix sounds like a fucking match to me. Before we get in that, is it me or does Rhea look like she wants to fuck up anybody who only looks like Dominic Mysterio? <laughs> Yo, yeah. <laughs> anybody else. She's like, nah, you're good. Well, you know what it, you know what it is, fucking um, she's Dominic's poppy, so she got to discipline him now because apparently he ain't learning fast enough on how to wrestle. Hey. <laughs> you know, hey. suppose she, she looked at Dominic and was like, "Yo, Ray might be your father, but I'm your daddy." <laughs> <laughs> the word she is manhandling homeboy. That that's not even fucking fair. <laughs> like Jesus, holy shit! He's just a child. Like, you leave him alone, ma'am. <laughs> Pick on someone your own size. <laughs> shit, be awesome. Why would you do this? <laughs> he's, he's picking on my man. But yeah, and then all right. So last night, AEW, the opening sequence to the Death Triangle and. Will Ospreay, Ray Phoenix, and Will Ospreay. That was fucking dope. I didn't get to see the whole match. I got, I said, I got it paused. Right now, after this shit, I'm gonna finish that. But yo, before we get into that, man, let's talk about uh, your experience with the. Uh, how was I, it over there? Yeah, all right. So bef- before we get into that, uh, we got Kofi coming in later because he was there. Gigi's always gonna be, you know, be coming through. Show was here at eight fifty nine. To go, th- uh, 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 and my brain, uh, 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 that's what he told us before the show and got off. Yeah. So it was confirmed. Show has a brain because he mentioned it twice. Yes, yes, <laughs> confirmed. But, um, but yeah, uh, so we're gonna have uh, Dirty Heels come on and uh, he's gonna talk about that shit also. But that was my first uh, independent wrestling show, Jabra Slam 2. And that shit was kind of dope. We got there mad early because we wanted seats. What up, pimp? You know, we, we wanted seats and Gigi wanted to go, you know, talk to the, um, the girl that she promoted the match with and, and all that other stuff. So we got there early. Me, Kenny, Gigi, and and the little one. By the way, she kicked my ass the whole fucking show. So <laughs> I, I'm like sitting bad right now. I got no ass. I'm just sliding off the seat. <laughs> I had to use a... a, a, a a belt those, to tie myself to to the fucking chair. I got no one ass of those now. Donuts to just snake <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> Word. I got I got big cuzzo to to protect me during the end of the shit. But it was it was kind of dope. 
Uh, I'm in Brooklyn right now. We'll jump on when I get it. All right, so Gigi's coming on a little later, but um, yeah, it was it was dope because when you watch wrestling on TV and then when you watch it live, you know, it's a lot different than if you was watching WWE live. You know what I'm saying? Like where WWE live, you could tell is a show and they're not really trying to engage the audience. They're just putting on the show and then the audience ga- engages themselves because they know like in this spot right here, we got to cheer for the dude to, you know, like everybody's clapping and he's in the headlock. They did that on purpose. So you could cheer for him to, to rise up. We're like on the independent show. They're, they're engaging you guys. Like it's almost like they're wrestling us and helping each other out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it, it was fucking fun, man. The, the first match was the world champion versus um, Pena versus uh, Mysterious Q. And they, the first move he did was a drop kick, right? And when Mysterious Q landed on that mat, I was like, holy shit. Someone just shot a shotgun in my fucking ear. Like, that's how loud that ring was. And then they started chopping each other. And Show called me up because, you know, Show's always late. And he's like, yo, um... I'm here. I'm down the block. I was like, yo, bro, you're missing a hell of a match. They're chopping the shit out of each other. He goes, oh, no, I can hear them chopping the shit out of each other down the fucking block. That's how loud that shit was. My man's chest was red like a motherfucker, you know, and it it was it was a dope experience. It's like it, you, you're you listening to these chops. I'm maybe 50 feet away from them. at one point. My chest started hurting. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know you're, you're engaging with the crowd. I seen. A dude, matter of fact, I'm not even going to fucking tell you what I've seen. I'm going to show you what I've seen because I found the, I found somebody made, recorded it. I'm going to show it real quick. But this was some fucking incredible shit if I can find the fucking. Well, while you're looking up that, uh, pimp, we're, we'll get to that. To what we thought about that. That's why I'm on the show, actually, this time. I know normally I'm only on the comics, but. I watched the wrestling too. Word. He's into the hippity hop. All right, hold on. I got. Where the fuck? Oh, here it goes. Now, this shit is 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 hard to describe to y'all, but when I saw it, all right. So I'm on this side. Oh, uh, so I'm on this side, right? Watching the crowd, I'm like in the second row. My man over here gotta be three fifty. Three something. Look at this shit. He just flies over the. He just, yo, he literally just flies over the whole fucking. And, oh wait, you could you could see us, you could see us. Yeah, yo, that's no, that's a big boy. Don't let that camera. You see, you see me and me and Kenny over here. Oh shit, yeah. It's like where's Waldo? <laughs> and, and then there goes Gigi's over. Hold on, I'm gonna see if I can try to pause it when they get to that. This woman went crazy, but we're behind homeboy over here. My man, yo, we went. You see, show like look at the show over here, yo. That was insane. That was insane to see because usually you see somebody like that and they stop him and it's like, oh fuck. But he did it. There was no stopping him. He did it. Now, yo, that was the biggest pop of the night. That was the biggest pop of the night right there. That was a fucking dope. See, it's a good experience. It was a, it was a, it's a lot different than, like, if you went to the WWE because it's a little bit more personal. But it, it's fucking, it was a dope experience. I'm actually interested in in promoting a wrestler in a match. You know, we're gonna have a. I want to make the knuckleheads versus the dirty heels in one of these shows. But, Yo, ben, don't get it twisted, man. I've I've been into wrestling before, so, and not just because I'm older. Like, yeah. Oh no, he likes wrestling. It's just um, I n- I normally have other things I'm doing on Thursdays. Today I was just free. Yeah, and and also he doesn't get as triggered as I do in the wrestling shit. But. Oh hell yeah! Man. Like a tool <laughs> <of> the butcher. <laughs> yo, yo, dude. And my man, and the crazy thing is, the other people in that match was just as big as him. Like they had yo one dude. Hey, yo, I'm gonna tell you this story. They have a guy that he thinks he's a movie star, so he has the 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 chop block, you know, where it says action and shit. Yeah. 
So he starts the match. He goes to the to the crowd and he goes pop, and it's like action. So he turns around and gets chopped, and I'm just yelling at him, cut, because <laughs> that chop sounded just like the fucking chop thing. So Kenny next to me, so it was prolific, prolific, which is a group which I got kind of like Nation of Domination vibes from them. That was Kenny's group. He didn't promote, but that he, he likes that group, prolific. And then he was wrestling the other group, which is actually like um, the people who promoted the show. Those are their boys. So the ref actually came out with them wearing their gear, and then he put on a ref shirt, and he's like, I'm the ref now. And we're all like, what the fuck, bro? Like, that's what kind of shit is that? And he cheated at the end. I'll tell you how they how he cheated at the end. But so this dude thinks he's a movie star and Kenny's talking shit. He's like, you ain't no fucking movie star. Your shit goes straight to Netflix. He turns around to Kenny and goes, my shit don't go straight to Netflix. My shit's in the big screen. So when he turned back around, I was like, oh, my boy said you a lifetime movie actor. <laughs> And everybody in the front row in front of us started dying. But the big dude turned around and said, which one of y'all said that? So I stood up. I said, my man right here. <laughs> I pointed right at Kenny. I was like, my man right here said that shit. So Kenny gets up and he's like, what's good? And he's like, yo, you know, he's like, um, you know what happens with the Lifetime movies? The bitch always dies at the end. And he points the dude on the floor like the other team. And and Gigi turns around and he's like, yo, why is Kenny certain problems? It's like, he didn't. I did that shit. I just trying to get Kenny fucked up. <laughs> it's like, it was fun. It was, it was fun. One of the other dudes, I forgot his name. He had some huge ass fucking shoulders. And Kenny was just like, yo, why your ears so big? Why your, your shoulders don't match your body? He was going in. He was going in. It, it was fun, though. So how this dude actually won. He was calling it down the middle, the ref. You know what I'm saying? He was calling the whole match down the middle and prolific. Their finishing move is like a, a three man styles clash. So the dude in the middle has the styles clash and then the other dudes hook the guy's arm with their feet and grab their legs. So it's like they have a half styles clash and all three of them do the styles clash on them. Okay. So they go to pin and the ref one, two and he does this to the guy like <laughs> that's undercover and the rest of the team comes out and some other people come out from the back and they grab him and then they do a move on him and he's like one two three all right that's it we won baby we won <laughs> and another dude because there's a feud from the first from the, the the battle royal where um the guy that came out to help the other team another dude came out of the crowd and he like literally jumped over homeboy like, i told him i was like yo my man you jumped too high on that one you almost like like you ever see somebody boing like fly over the target and <laughs> almost oh, land on like his head? Naomi used to when she first started. Yes, 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 exactly. And yeah, what's going on, normal guy? Yo, and that was funny because I was sitting there. I, I actually was screaming. I was like, "How come this is a better fucking fight than Moxie versus CM Punk?" <laughs> like, what the fuck? Because they actually looked like they was like they were fucking each other up. You know, they wasn't just shoving each other, hoping for people to you know back him up and all that shit. But the, the main event was Mia Yim versus Big Swole, which that was, you know, it started out and it was um kind of like a technical wrestling match. And then like maybe five minutes in, uh, another set of people came in and interfered. And then it turned into a tag team match with Big Swole and Colossus Mike versus the two people that interfered. So Mia Yim was, sent, you know, sent to the back because she got DDT'd by one of the dudes and she wound up helping them out at the end. But. Who is the heavyweight champ in the in the company? Pena. Mike is it Michael Pena? I know his last name is Pena. He um Matt Awesome. He said that he trained Matt Awesome. So I got. I hold on. Let me look it up because you know me. I'm bad with names. I'm bad with names. I was gonna say I'm bad with names and bed frames. Like I don't. Steve <laughs> Pena. <laughs> I don't know why. Is it? Yeah, I don't know why it just came to me. This is the this is the champion, Steve Pena from the Bronx, baby. The boogie down. And it's funny he has a barcode on the back of his tights and it says the Bronx is almost like he, you know he just got out of jail and shit. Dope dude. Yo, He's the that, one. He his is whole that the chest. Title? Was, yes. That's not a bad looking title. No, it's not. They they unveiled a brand new title, um the the battle the battle weight championship, which that's uh, the one you said uh, Colossus has right. Yes, and yo, dude, it it looks it looks fucking dope as shit. 
I, I, I gotta see if I can find them. There you go. Colossus Mike. There you go. This is, uh, let me see. Here you go. This is the title right here that they unveiled it that day. Like the dude that, that made it. It looks a lot better without the filter on it. But yeah. Okay. It's pretty dope because this match, the way this match worked was there was a four way dance, right? And you have a five minute time limit. And there's about eight other people around the ring. And when the time limit runs out, if if you pin somebody, the, the four men that start the match, if you pin somebody before the five minutes, you're the winner of the match. You won the championship. If if you don't pin anybody before the five minutes and the five minutes run out, then everybody on the outside comes in and it becomes a regular battle royal. And then when it's the final four, it goes back to a four-way dance. It was yeah, actually that, really fucking dope. That's a pretty cool concept. Yeah, that is a pretty cool concept. Because I they didn't they didn't explain that during the you know the match. So I'm sitting there, I'm like, yo, what's going on? Is it like every couple minutes somebody from the outside comes in, or when someone gets eliminated, someone goes in, and the dude in front of me is like, nah, man, this is the like he literally broke down the match. He's like, they should have told y'all, but they didn't, but this is the rules. I was like, all right, cool. I hope this don't happen the whole time because you know yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> you know, but and our yeah. next match is one you already know, and it's <laughs> Yeah, you know, <laughs> the rules for this match have been explained two weeks ago on Twitter. I hope you get it. Yeah. Like, what? What the fuck? Why is there a ladder in the ring, but there's nothing up? Why are they climbing a ladder? <laughs> All right, so you, you got to climb the ladder, sing a song fully, and when you sing the song, you got to go underneath the ring, and then you can pin someone. It's like, wait, Yo. what? You know, they got to try to be trendy now for, for all match type rules. You just have to scan the barcode and read what it is. <laughs> yeah, you scan the, the QR code and shit, <laughs> and it just pops up. I can see that guy signing with somebody soon. Yo, he was he's yo, he did a move to um Mysterious Q where Mysterious Q was running to the ropes and you know when they do their handspring off the rope and they do the cutter like Phoenix does? When he got into the middle of the handspring, Pena came and drop kicked him in the face. Nice. And yo, it was smooth as shit. I remember when that happened, I was like, Oh shit. And the dude on the other side of the thing was like, yo, that was nice. That was real nice. I was like, dude, you damn right. Yeah, that was that was sick. That was like, really uh, fucking dope. Is it like the first time you ever see Adam Cole super kick somebody in the middle of a moonsault? Yes. Yes. Like kind of, yeah. The timing was perfect for that one. It was really fucking dope. Really dope. I mean, I, I could explain everything to you, but I want, you know, Gigi and, and uh, Kofi to tell you what's going on. And we, you know, we get into this stuff. But yo, let's talk about the the thing you want to talk about with CM Punk and his foot. All right, so for those who didn't watch AEW, uh, his little recap, this was built like they were playing it up like this is going to be match of the night quality. Punk comes out in his his long tights. Moxley comes out. They start the match. They do a little bit of thing. Punk throws a kick with his right leg. Hits Moxley in the face, crumples to the ground. Because it's everybody knows his left foot is fucked up. Yeah. Crumpling his left foot. Doctors come, uh, the trainer comes in. The ref's like, yo, what's, you know, trying to stop the match? Moxley's like, yo, fuck this. Picks him up, beats his ass, hit him with the, with the fucking um, paradigm shift. Paradigm shift. Picks him up again, hits him again with the paradigm shift. One, two, three. The crowd is like booing. The crowd is like, yo, this is bullshit. Moxie looks pit Moxie looks pissed off like Shawn Michaels looked pissed off at the Montreal screw job. Punk is fucking wincing in pain. They when they take him out, Punk is looking back at the crowd and looking at the situation. Cause now it's starting a little bit to cheer for Moxley, but still not all there. It looks like he's done. He can't put any weight on his shit. So it could be kfeb it could be the fact that punk wasn't a hundred percent but because so for all the bull the talk about punk backstage and all the shit that came out recently by him and hangman and all you know his shit with colt and all that it could have been a situation where 
he was like, yo, it's going to take me longer than expected. So instead of holding up the title, let me just go out here, lose, then you guys do whatever, and then when I fully come back, we'll pick up from there. But now the thing with the with the foot is, so I worked in a rehab center as security, but I, I know a little bit. There are, uh, especially with foot injuries, when people come in with braces on the legs and all that, no. <laughs> uh, when people come in with foot injuries, there's there's a point in time where they get evaluated for weight bearing, where they can see if that foot has healed enough to support the full amount of weight. So with Punk, who knows the actual status of his foot, but in reality... It is plausible that when Punk went for the kick and put all of his weight on that foot, it's not load-bearing. So he fucked his foot up again because he did something he shouldn't have done. Yeah, but he was jumping around on his foot last week. Yes, but jump, but jumping and load-bearing are two different things. That, Like I said, when you get evaluated, it's specifically for load-bearing. So like... You'll see the people, uh, like at my old job, you'll see people in the cast walk with the crutches or with a cane. And they're walking on the foot. They're walking. But they haven't been tested for load bearing yet. So the difference is, it, it, it's a, more medical than, than I can explain, but you have to be able with your foot to support your the entire weight of your body. When you jump, you're landing both feet you could put one foot down first. There's ways to mitigate and make it look like you're fine. But so he it, was hop, he was hopping on one foot. Like he was the, the other foot was bent and he was just hogo sticking on that one foot last week. True. Again, like I said, could be KFEB, could be whatever, but there's a legit there's also a legit reason it could have happened. Cuz to me it looked like it looked like this is Punk's like last hurrah. Like he was like, um, my shit's not really healed. Maybe the jumping fucked it up more than he thought. I, I don't know. I can believe that he's on some. I'm gonna be out longer than, than you know expected. So just why don't we? Why don't I lose it? Like I'm good enough to to do something. I lose it. That way you can go with the other storylines and not just drag out Moxie beating everybody and then I come back two years from now. Yeah, but the my problem with that is you had you had Moxley go out there and squash him. Like it couldn't have been the plan to turn he like for for the plan to be go out there and make it look like you re injured your foot and Moxley squashes the shit out of you. After CM Punk said all that shit in his fucking interview and his promo, like that that's piss poor fucking planning. That that don't make no goddamn sense. So then there, there has to be some I've heard I've heard that uh, this might be the the punk heel turn. That he's gonna come back and the shit I'm fucking tired of is you fans turned your back on me. It's like but they didn't, because again, they were booing Moxley when he won. They were all saying this was bullshit. So, yeah. I, I mean, we, but who, who, who was it? Uh, Pimp. He goes, "You think that the this is uh, an issue with AEW and Punk?" I mean, I don't think. To be honest with you, I don't think Khan has the balls to do something to Punk, like because there's an issue with him and and Cowboy in the back. You know what I'm saying? They, like I heard that there was almost an issue with uh, Eddie Kingston, where they 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 actually suspended him quietly because he smack or he he tried to smack Sammy Guevara in the back like on some real shit. Yeah, because he because he uh, he made fun of him or something. And but I'm like yo, I don't the whole bullshit. I, I even if this was punishment or this was the way it was supposed to go, like Moxie. Is the champion now. He was the interim champion. 
And if he would have lost it, then that would have been waste of an interim champion. Because literally, Punk was what? Out for four weeks? He was out for Forbidden Door, which was the week after he got hurt. And then uh, Moxie defended the title, what, three times? Once against Lance Archer, once against Jericho, once against um, the other Japanese dude. Yeah. Moxie so, was... So you got to look at it both ways. This was almost a no-win situation because, like you said, if Moxley, if Moxley wins, then the whole interim shit means no. But again, if Punk, if what do you call it? If Punk won, you said, then the interim shit didn't mean anything. But if Punk loses, I mean, he did lose. But if it wasn't such shenanigans around it and he lost cleanly, why the fuck make an interim chance? Just strip him of the belt then. Uh, to be honest, Either they should have they should have stripped him of the belt. Or, or or what you do is don't have CM Punk every week. Have him you wanna you wanna make a heel turn? Have him not defend that title. And he, he's there, he's not there, and then you can have Moxie like, yo, you're not even defending the champion, not a fucking champion, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you so, know. Yes, that is the way you can go. I I heard you make a comment before, uh, I think it was last week, when Punk made the uh, when he made his promo that they're doing too much mentioning of WWE shit yeah. from the past. So now, that is an option, but then you run the risk of people bringing up Brock Lesnar and bringing up WWE even more, because now he's doing what they're doing. He's doing what Roman does. He's doing all that. Yeah, but other. but it seems like the heels in AEW just go, okay, we're gonna be the Miz, and we're gonna say you're the Miz, and we're gonna be Triple H, and we're gonna be Brock Lesnar or whatever bad guy that's in the WWE. What what? In all honesty. Where's the original? Like, all the ex-WWE guys are doing WWE shit, even Jericho right now, with the whole sports entertainer shit. I don't know how he's a sports entertainer and he's the lion heart from the, the heart dungeon because they don't make sports entertainers in the heart dungeon. Oh, that, but, but it's, it's, it's all stupid. It's, that is literally stupidity. That's, that's redundancy and stupidity. Is, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't like it. I'm not interested in that match. Especially after the Lionheart got his ass kicked by Moxie. What, he's going to come back out of retirement? He's going to have another hardcore match as the Lionheart? Come on, man, with this bullshit. They finally got a million viewers, and that's the match they presented. Yeah, I mean, that goes to show you who's out of touch now. Remember when everybody was on some Vince McMahon was always out of touch? But when he put something on TV... Besides Brock Lesnar <laughs> and everybody watched, something happened. You know, something happened that progressed the storyline. It didn't end but, something. See, that's why I'm more inclined to think that Punk actually did get hurt again. And they had to call the match on the fly. Because it makes no sense to have Moxley. It makes no sense to set the match in that way. I don't, you, you know why I don't think he really got hurt? <laughs> Because I just watched the match, and he didn't wince on any of the times he stood up. Moxie didn't have to physically uh, pick him up. He just did the whole, I'm going to guide your head, and you stand up. And every time he put pressure on his foot, there was no wince. There was no, no selling of that foot injury other than him being on the ground. And you know how I love how th these people sell nowadays. Like even yeah. Cody Rhodes... I don't understand. You can't throw a punch, but you could do a suplex. You could do a spinning fucking power slam. You could do a choke slam with your torn pec. Can't throw a punch. Like, come on. let's make let's make this make sense a little bit. Yeah, but, just, okay. But now we've seen a case where Cody Rhodes went in there with a torn pectoral muscle, still did shit, didn't wince. I've seen you with a torn shoulder, something in your shoulder torn. You still did a, a fun run without wincing, like. Oh Pain no! But management and adrenaline and all that shit in the moment. See, but the the thing is, when I had my torn shoulder, I winced at certain movements. 
every I had full mobility in my arm, but certain move when I threw some, when I put pressure on things, it hurt. I didn't do that during the fun run. I made sure I didn't do that. When yeah. you sit there and when you sit there and you throw a punch, you're like, oh my god! But then you try to do something else that actually is like throwing a punch, but ten times worse, and you don't win. So it's like, come on, bro. But, and then so, when somebody's and not for nothing, when somebody's pushing up against your shit, that actually that actually feels better than if they were doing something else. No, but I what do you call it? Punk is visibly limping. Like you could see, he's he's fucked up every time he was in the ring when he tried to move after that. I didn't see it. I just yeah. finished watching the match. Look, look, look back again. Every time he comes up, he's his left leg. He's limping on it. His toes are down. He's not planted straight. He's. I just popping. saw this match. He 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 stood up on that fucking leg with no assistance from Moxley. And you want to talk about load bearing? Saw, he him standing. Yeah, maybe you saw the match from uh, WWE, where they actually get paid to actually fucking wrestle. You know. Cause I, I, cause I honestly believe in all the ex WWE uh, competitors in AEW. It's in their contract. You don't have to sell. It's optional. Cause it's pissed me off. Every single fucking one of them. You don't have to sell. Broke your foot. Fuck it. You know who did the best selling? You know who did the best selling in AEW from ex WWE? Matt Hardy, and that's because he literally fell off a fucking scaffold and smashed his head on the concrete. He was really fucked up. Dude, I, again, we saw two different things because I saw CM yeah. Punk hurt that entire time. Bro. I didn't, just like, I didn't see it. I didn't see it at all. I I don't know. Maybe you, you want to believe it, but I I didn't no, see him I, hurt. I want to believe what? You know me. I'm not a fucking shill for anybody. No, I'm not saying you. I, I mean, you, you want to believe he was hurt. Look, I'm going to play this shit right now. What? When he gets up, you're going to see him limp on that on that leg. He doesn't... He limps on that leg. You see the, his foot position. Fuck it if we get demonetized. There's no sound in it. Let's see. What's going on, Walter? And they just mentioned him hopping on that foot a few weeks ago. Look. 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 See, wait, 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 wait. Look. And then he he takes two full steps on that foot. Okay. He takes but two he's full still... steps. Now look at when after the 80 fucking five elbow strikes. Yo, they still have this match advertised for the fucking the pay per view. No, nah. not not that I'm aware of. And I don't know about you, but if anybody ever was actually hurt and someone touched the shit that made them hurt, the first thing they're doing is trying to get away. They I mean, like, come on, they're, they're, no, no, Sabu ripped his bicep off him, and, and Terry Funk still tried to fucking wrestle him, and he literally was decking Terry Funk in the face. So he's like, "Yo, get the fuck away from me." Yeah, you see you how Funk, he pushed away the fucking, what do you call it? Look, see? He's hobbled. Yeah, and he he jumped off of it. He's being helped by Moxley. Look at that, right there. Look at that. There was no, there was no sell of that foot, dude. First off, in that moment, how are you selling a foot? The dude's picking you up to hit a paradigm shift and go home. The same way he sold it in the other two. No, but the other, again, the other two was designed. This was the yo, get up, let me hit the shit real quick. If his shit really was fucked up, he wouldn't have to sell it. It would just be fucked up. But it, okay. But again, you just said Cody Rhodes went in with a torn pack and didn't sell his shit and was doing moves. It is possible. But what I'm saying is 
when Cody Rhodes sold it for the littlest fucking thing and then didn't sell it for the big shit, that pisses me off. Don't sell it. Yeah. Don't sell it at all. But we know he's legitimately hurt. So? We can also know that if he's wrestling, he can he can do things with it. No doctor in the world would let him go out there if he couldn't raise his fucking hands. But apparently he can't take off his jacket, but he can throw 52 punches and a suplex off the top rope and a, and a, and a diving stunner and all this other shit, but he can't take his jacket off. It's all I'm saying. Yo, he doesn't have to really be hurt. But if you want to sell it, sell it. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, even with real injuries, sometimes you don't see the pain. I worked in a rehab center. No, I, I, I get it. I get it. But in an industry where you have to sell things and make things look believable, you do have this. You have to show the pain. We have to connect to it. Did you not see Young Rock? We have to connect to the wrestler. We have to feel yeah. his pain. Except we go on to the main event, which is the the European Union or whatever Will Ospreay calls his group versus the Death Triangle. And the first half of that match, or the beginning of that match, which you brought up earlier, was fucking phenomenal. And not one thing was sold in that. Well, because the beginning of that match was reversal after reversal. How do you sell a reversal? Well, there... What I'm saying is, selling is not the cat end-all be-all. There's a whole bunch of wrestlers who made a career not selling shit, and we're fine. You bring I, Goldberg no, up every 10 seconds. I, I, no, shit. <laughs> I get it. I get it. But Goldberg never uh, convinced us that he broke his fucking foot or his leg or his back in a fight. When he when he speared Bret the Hitman Hart and Bret Hart had that metal plate on his on his abdomen, he sold he was knocked out. When he really, when he oh, really, con- when he really concussed himself against the Undertaker, he sold that he was concussed. He almost killed the Undertaker. That's how committed he was. That's not a. You're conflating some things here, man. You, that's not a sell if you're literally concussed. That you physically can't do shit. But you, see, but you see what I'm saying? He was literally concussed, and he and it and you see the effect. If he literally broke his foot, there would be a problem there. He, his foot did not have time to swell up and get numb. If this was a boxing match and you break your hand, after a few rounds, your hand gets numb and you can start throwing it again. Yeah, but if you go and you into still the boxing see, match, your and hand's you still already see, fucked up. But you still see when they throw the punch, people can tell, like, I think his hand's broke because he's no longer throwing the punch. When, yeah. when, when, um, what's his name? Uh, Santos for uh, uh, John Jones... And towards MCL, his ACL, his BCL, his ABC, his CDB, the LGBTQ in his knee, when he tore all that shit, he could barely fucking stand. And I agree with you. But, again, the, he there was one time where he didn't sell, and that was immediately standing up and getting put in a paradigm shift. All I'm saying is, if he really hurt himself, I don't believe it. I do think he's not at 100%. And maybe he just was able to do what he did because he's like, get the title off me because I'm going to be out longer. Well, that I, that I can't believe. And all I'm saying is, if that's how you, if that's how they book the match, close your shop up, you, there's no way you can ever run a legitimate show again because that is the dumbest decision in the fucking world. There had to be something. There had to be something else. Well, listen. The way that match should have went was CM Punk starts the match off strong. Moxie hits him in the fucking leg, puts him in a fucking ankle lock, and he taps out because his foot's not one hundred percent healed. I agree with you. I agree. There, there's a million other ways that could have that match could have went. No, yeah, I get. I but get what that, you're saying. That was not it, because like I said. No, yeah. Moxie no, the, the fact pissed. that he, yeah, the the fact that he was hurt and then got squashed afterwards, it made it look point. It made it, it was a waste of our time. Because, yeah. like I said, Moxley was pissed walking out of the arena. Then the promo he cut had the promo he cut afterwards was like almost like Roman Reigns had talked shit to him beforehand. Yeah, and, and he, he came out like, "No, nah, motherfucker, you ain't nothing. I'm wrestling." 
And I'm like, I'm watching it going, dude, you're wrestling. You do know Will Offspray is on this show tonight. You do know Kenny Omega's back. You do know, even though you don't like him and I'm not a big fan of him, you do know Brian Danielson is still here. Claudio showed up. Yeah. Like, you are not wrestling, my man. It, and I'm surprised he didn't yeah. bleed in that match. But yeah. uh, but I understand what you're saying. You're he's a niche, you know. He has that the the, the he has the hardcore style, the physical style. That's not pure wrestling. He's, he's Bruiser Brody. Yeah, Bruiser Brody was good. Me ain't no Bret Hart. Who would you rather watch Bruiser Brody? If you if you're a wrestling fan, would you rather watch Bruiser Brody or Bret the Hitman Hart? Bret Hart. Like that's the thing. It, it, AEW is supposed to be the where you go for the wrestling fan. Yeah. But then they then they bring in people who do the other shit that's not wrestling and you don't highlight any of your wrestlers. Yeah, especially the like the Death Triangle versus uh Will Ospreay team, I forgot the that fucking was, name. Yeah, I, I Yeah, but Green Power or some shit, uh. Yeah, that I mean that match is fucking dope. You know what I'm saying? Like to see the the like, here's the thing. When you get people that can fly, like Allspray, Ray Phoenix, uh, Pack, Pentagon, let them do their thing. To me, it seemed like when the WWE hired Apollo Cruz, that was the biggest waste of of time for them to 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 hire him because you hired him because he's a huge jack dude that can do phenomenal shit in the ring. And you don't let him do any of the phenomenal shit that he can do. So, Triple H hired Apollo Crews for what you just said. Vince McMahon does not like when when the bigger dudes do cruiserweight shit. He doesn't like it because he doesn't think it's believable. And he doesn't think it's effective. Because, think about it. And I don't agree with it. But in a way, it kind of makes sense. Because if you come out and... You look physically stronger than the other guy. Why are you wasting your time backflipping on him when you should be picking him up and slamming him to the ground? So in a weird way, I could see why Vince would do that. But as a fan and a consumer of the product, get, let the man do what he does. Yeah. that's Because Lord knows, and we can get into that when we talk about NXT, his promo with Grayson Waller, it was... Better than I've seen him, but he's got that John Morrison effect. Yeah, where he can wrestle, but on the mic, you're like, eh. well, because most of the time, your personality and your character doesn't mesh well when it comes to talking. Like, look at Roman Reigns. Until they said, "All right, show your personality and be you," he was having hard times on that mic. He was he was the big boss man theme song on that mic. He was serving hard times. Yeah, but that that's because they gave him shit to say. No, it's true. But, but I say this a lot. Not everybody needs to talk. Not everybody needs a promo. True. And and also you can accomplish the same thing with like a vignette or record something in the back. I honestly believe that the '80s style of of uh, interviews where it was. Let's cut to the back. And the Macho Man is doing all that crazy shit <laughs> was the best thing that they've ever done yeah. because it's not live. And then if it like you get to see the best part of it, because remember, this is a show, right? So why wouldn't you take the safest route for putting on the best show? So if this guy doesn't talk, do a bunch of takes. This is the best one. Coach him like get some motivation behind it. Not just go out there and be like, say these exact words. You have five seconds. Go. Oh shit! I I don't remember the thirteen pages you gave me. Yeah, but <laughs> Savio you know, Vega in your house. <laughs> you know what the problem is? They tried so hard. What's up, to, Gigi? It's up, Gigi. They tried so hard to make sure on, Hassan? that they don't have fifteen generic wrestler guys. Like, and I'm a I'm a fan of Roderick Strong. But Roderick Strong's character is white dude who wrestles well. But 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 you, but but, so, but his his the difference. My point being no, is, yeah. My point being is back in the day, Macho Man was distinctly different. 
He did that on purpose. Yeah. Hogan was different. Jake the Snake was different. Everybody had a different fucking character. Today, everybody's just Drew McIntyre is just a Scottish Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is just a fuck. Like everybody is just a generic yeah person who does shit, and then they want him to speak. No, it's true. Uh, all right, Gigi. Yeah, you got specific. I'm gonna be home at ten, ten, and twenty seconds. Ten, ten wins. <laughs> no, but it's it's true though. But but also th- think about WCW, Malenko and and Benoit. Don't don't speak, but they're technical. They're technically fucking yeah. awesome. Bret Hart was technically fucking awesome. Well, some some people put him in the ring and let's, like if you put Roderick Strong in the ring, and he told the story. Awesome. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying. You told like this is where you would have the other guy puts it and let him sell it. But now let's see if Triple H can bring some of that because that's what made NXT black and gold good. Is they weren't worried about what the fuck was being said from time to time. They just let you fucking go out there and wrestle. Yeah, yeah. AEW. Not, not everything's a miss. The. I think the trios tournament is actually pretty good. What's going I on, Harold? If it, if it culminates in the in the best friends winning, I think that's going to be awesome. With Orange Cassidy and Trent Beretta and Chuck, whatever his name is. Yeah, that's, Chuck Taylor. I think that could be good. What they're doing with Ricky Starks and oh, he's, he, yeah, yeah. And yo, I didn't. I never liked Ricky Starks, but now all of a sudden, since he's he's lost the FTW title. My man, you want to talk about promo work? Yeah. My man was on fire yesterday with his promo against Hobbs. No, he it, it was almost like that was real. Yeah. But speaking of which, I don't we'll get I don't know if you want to get into an hour later, but there was actually a thing after AEW where Omega and fucking Osprey went at it on the mic. Okay. Th- yesterday? Yeah. Like, right as soon as it went off the air, uh uh, what's it, Kenny Omega? A mandatory yeah, meeting. Mandatory meeting was, oh, so, shit. So, all right, we're gonna have to hear about that. But, about that. Yo, you yeah. want to do that first? Or the Omega no, no, talk to you about the Omega stuff because if Gigi's gonna be home in a couple in like 20 minutes, we could talk about that when she gets on. But so, right after AW went out, uh, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega came out, and Kenny Omega was like, Yo, he's like. These guys are new here. They don't know what the deal is yet. So let me do it. And he thanked the crowd for being there and kind of like talked shit to uh, Will Ospreay and his boys because he's like, yo, we brought you here. This is the shit you got to do now. You can't just do what you do in uh, Japan. It's just wrestle and go home. And Ospreay is like, yo, bruv, come on, bruv. I'm, I'm, I did everything you did, but faster and better. And Kenny Omega was like, what do you mean you did everything I did? You lost to, to Okada? I lost to Okada, too. Who gives a <laughs> shit? He's like, the difference is nobody in this arena knows you. But when I fought Okada, they called that one of the best of all times. And I did it over there. And, like, he, yo, it got personal to the fact where they had to hold, like, the Young Bucks and uh, Cyrus were like, yo, I forget what Cyrus's real name is. Uh, Don Callis. Yeah. They literally like tried to grab the mic away from o- uh, from Omega. I was like, "Yo, what the fuck are you doing?" And Omega was like, "All right, all right, no, fuck this," and grabbed the mic again and went at him. And was like, "Yo, you ain't shit. The only reason you you have something is because I paved the way for you to fucking do some shit. And now Man. I brought you here, motherfucker. And yo, it got to the point where I think Will Ospreay was really mad, and Omega had to fucking at the end grab the mic. It was like, "Yo, we just had a spat, but no heat, no heat." He literally was saying that as he was backing out. And then uh, at the end, my favorite thing, he was like, oh, because he doesn't have a catchphrase yet, I guess I got to do it. And then he did his whole good night and fucking hit the the trigger like he always does. Oh, shit. And wait, wait that was on YouTube? Yeah. Yeah. You okay. can find that video on YouTube on the uh, AEW channel. Okay, all right. Yo, real quick. Uh, yo, thanks for the follow, Lord Franklin on Twitch. Appreciate you, appreciate you. And Dream was saying that Death Triangle should have won 
the first real champion, not the EV. Yo, I've been saying this for months now. The minute that they said that they were going to do a tournament, I said it. Death Triangle I, it was my pick to win, but someone else should have won. And at the end of it, Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks come out on some, yo, we are the challengers. I, I honestly think they're setting it up for the best friends to win. Because I think Kenny Omega and uh, the Young Bucks are and Will Ospreay's group, they're going to cannibalize each other. So that by the time you get to the, what do you call it? By the time you get to the pay-per-view, What's going on, you Tino? have to set up for the best friends. Because as much as we would like for this title to be legitimized, I had not seen a trios championship that is like 100% legit. I mean, Pac's got a title around his waist now. That means absolutely nothing. I mean, no, he that that is the championship of Dark. Because I only heard of him defending that title on Dark. Yo, <laughs> I'm I've been I've been a fan of AEW from the inception. Yeah, me too. It's been documented. We went to Comic Con, saw their first thing. We went to their first show. I'm a fan. I don't know what the fuck that title is called. I legit don't know what that the, title is called that he has. The, the international title? No. No, it's, the, not, it's, it's not the, an intercontinental. It's not an international. Is it like, it could be like an all, an Atlantic, I think. Atlantic something. I think that, um, all Atlantic championship. Yeah. So does that mean he doesn't? Defended in the Pacific Ocean? Like, no, like the, not only the, on the Atlantic side. The Mediterranean, no. no uh, the blood, the Red Sea, no. Can't do it in Egypt with the Nile. None of that. Boxhead. Oh, uh, we had a. Apparently, we had a question. Uh oh, what the Walter? With Walter, do you think uh, Steven Regal should be head of creative and writer of AEW instead of being part of the Blackpool? He has a lot of experience with WWE. You know, I don't, I don't know about head, but there should be more than one person writing because the last thing, the last time I, last thing I heard was Khan was in control of everything. Yeah, there needs to be like the WWE had people doing stuff, and then the the end no bo was Vince, and there's no difference between him and Khan, but at least he had other people thinking shit up. Because if it was just Vince doing it, we would have had Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. For, for the next five years, every fucking main event. Yeah. And the girls would have been in bikinis already. You know what Yo, I'm saying? What I, what I think is he's got Jerry Lynn, as far as I remember. He's got Dean Malenko. He's got Dustin, who's in the back, who's still trying to wrestle, but he's at the tail end. He should let those guys, along with Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks, come up with a new way of getting their stories put out. And like you said, be the one quality control where, you know, if somebody goes too far, he can pull them back. And, yeah, I agree. Kip Sabian coming back was awesome because he set it up. I didn't, I didn't see that part, but, yeah, go ahead. So what happened was, you know how they had uh, Kip Sabian's the, the in bag? the box? Yeah. yeah. So he was sitting there. and so uh, That's who uh, back that is. Like, okay. Pack was like, yo, fuck What's going this. on, Jeff? He went into the crowd and confronted him, pulled the box off, and it was some dude who had his mouth taped inside the box. And then Kip Sabian came from behind him and beat the shit out of him. Okay, so what's the beef with him and Pac? Or is that just some? I have no. That's something I guess that happened, like in uh, like an overseas indie promotion shit. Oh, okay, okay. Not... You know, th th listen. I'm not saying that it's not going to be a good match, but I'm getting it's, it's a little frustrating that we're getting storylines that are being built off of shit that happens that we can never see. Like, like I'm pretty sure if we're going to get a, we're going to get a storyline between uh, Claudio and Eddie Kingston, if Eddie Kingston doesn't get fired because of the shit he did to Sammy Guevara. But that's going to be based off of shit that happened 27 years ago at a fucking at any promotion where both of them made fifteen dollars to wrestle. <laughs> and then, then I never forgave him for it. And now we're gonna see the the conclusion of the of the shit. And it's like, all right. So at what point do we start building storylines of what happened in AEW? You know, like like it's cool. It's cool where you you know you have this history, but 
Let the history be not the foundation of the story, but just an add on to the story. Because when it's the foundation, it's like, I, I have to take your word for this. I, 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 there's nothing, I, I can't see it. Unless, unless you have videotape of this shit happening, like, I, I can't see it. Yeah. The, the thing is, with the problem with AEW is that it's so hard to build stuff that you have already when all your wrestlers have so much history that the fans know about. Yeah. So, like, Motor City Machine Guns were announced to come out to face FTW and Wardlow. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. I called it because I knew that they, they were boys with uh, was, Sanjay Dutt. Was, I thought you had inside scoop because I was <laughs> thinking, I, I, who the fuck was I? I thought it was the Briscoes because they yeah. had Ring of Honor. But you try to, what do you call it? Like, who would Jay Lethal have in AEW to go up against Wardlow and FTW? Nobody. But you say Motor City Machine Guns, and I know who that is. You know who that is. The yeah. people in the crowd know who that is. It's it's the problem with starting something new when you don't want to make new stars. When you don't want to make your own homegrown stars. You know, and you're relying on other shit. But, you know, but the, the thing is, though, where well, you just said who can go against Wardlow. I understand this guy is green, but you have a fucking seven foot four giant with Jay Lethal. Now, yeah. on paper, on paper, the names Motor City Machine Guns are dope, and to see them with FTR in the ring, that's a match because we all seen them in, in Impact before Impact went to shit. You know, like they can go. Everyone knows they can go, but if you're gonna have Wardlow and a seven foot fucking tall giant, why not have Wardlow take down the giant? The giant yeah. don't need it. Like they had the giant Gonzalez wrestling. At WrestleMania with the other thing. Warlow can do something to him. True. Now, I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I will say, one, one, who's the third man? Two, I think this might lead to Motor City Machine Guns versus FTR FT, yeah. for one of the fucking championships they have. Which is, again, another problem... Another problem that I see for AEW is when you allow. No, Rick. All I saw was this. Go ahead. Keep going. You. Good. Uh, when you allow your wrestlers to interact with other promotions, you now have to take them out of your storylines and do storylines for other promotions. Yeah, and it's that, almost and like FTR is the best tag team in the world. But we can't have them here because we need our tag team shit to do something. And 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 the crazy shit is, FTR is taking precedence over the tag team champions. Yeah. Like, did you see that? Did you see that lame ass excuse to have the claim versus uh, swerving our glory? I yo, I saw the lame ass excuse that uh, Swerve and Keith Lee had, but then I saw uh, the acclaim and uh, Cass. Be like, yo, fuck you and you, yeah, and your pity for us with them winning his tag the team. Best team <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, but, I, the more the more I see of Anthony Bowen, yeah, the more I agree with him. He's they're starting to be like my new day, like where I'm like, yeah, this, you know what? Yeah. I'm with these guys, man. He just, he just don't expect him to go scissor me, daddy ass. Don't expect him to do that, but he will write some bars on you. <laughs> Cap over here got bars, but yo. That so that is the biggest problem I see with AEW, not the lack of storyline, the fact that a lot of their originals and a lot of their titles take second place to the names. So, so um, fuck, I, yo, I can only call him cowboy shit for some reason. Uh, Adam Page. Yes, Adam Page becomes the WWE champ, uh, the AEW champion. And what happened? Nothing. And then Adam Cole comes out and he gets a title shot almost immediately. And it's all about Adam Cole. Granted, maybe Hangman Page can't hang with him on the mic, but you can still shed a light where both of these guys come out on top. 
Yeah. It, it showed either there's favoritism there for the elite and the undisputed era, or it's this guy ain't good enough to be the champion and we expose that. You cannot expose your own people to be not good enough. I'm going to say that it's in a, that they exposed that he wasn't good enough to be champ for the simple fact that Hangman Page essentially did nothing, fought no one. Yeah, you want to read this on? Yeah, yo, if John Cena shows up to All Out to face Moxie for the AEW title, I am turning off the TV and I'm no longer watching AEW. And that's not because I don't like John Cena. That is because now we got Vince McMahon running AEW. I'm sorry. I cannot accept it. I, I, I wouldn't accept it from the other place. I'm not accepting it from them. I'm sorry. I don't give a shit. Yo, I'm gonna, if, if anybody watches the comic book podcast that's watching us now, you know the last two weeks I'm, all, I'm becoming the king of bold fucking statements. <laughs> but... AEW started out. We're not gonna sign every ex WWE uh, guy. Yes, Miro, fucking Moxley. Uh, I was gonna call him Fresher Fit. Swerve then, <laughs> swerve in your glory and glory. Uh, fucking Claudio, Daniel Bryan, like all these months. CM Punk, all these motherfuckers come in and get shit to do. And again, Ricky Starks killing it. That's taking the backseat. Wardlow. What that tie where the fuck did that title go? Yeah, the, the TBS, the TNT title went to shit. Yeah. When yeah. Cody left, that title went to shit. There's there's a yo. The thing is. So what I was saying with Hangman is yeah. they exposed that he I got you, isn't Price the Hold man up. because they don't fucking build their own stars. But look what happened. Moxley wins, and all of a sudden. Brody King won the Battle Royal and had an awesome match with with uh, Moxley. The dude came over to Japan. That other random dude who won a fucking thing in some other place, nobody even bump fuck whatever, came in and had a match. And instantly, Moxley turned the interim championship into, no, this is the fucking championship. Yeah. And regardless of what you want to do with, with, you know, punk. with the situation with Punk, Moxley... In three defenses, re elevated the title. When yeah. Adam Page is your fucking homegrown. Yeah, Adam Why Page. He elevated. Look at look at the first couple of champions. John, uh, Chris Jericho, ex WWE guy. I understand you need he's the name, so you needed to put it on him so everybody turns in. Yeah, the Jericho, ex WWE guy, but he's more of a world wrestler. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, Moxley comes in and he's your ex WWE guy, and yeah. he got it because finally Moxley won the fucking big one and it's legit. Then Kenny Omega, Kenny Omega makes a whole lot of sense to win your championship, he's the best in the world, yes, but he's your fucking vice president, yeah, <laughs> like he's your EVP, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then it goes to Hangman, your first legit homegrown. And nothing. The hangman should have been the one punk. that 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 yeah. could have did the international shit like like uh, Moxley did recently. Yeah. And then Punk gets up, in Kofi, and everybody's starting to to pick up steam again because it's CM Punk, it's the ex WWE guy who finally blah blah blah. Yeah. And then we say Moxley comes in, and Moxley within three matches brings that title back up to where it has to be. These guys have they have to. They, they have to find their own people, because if we look at all the champions, Moxley, ex WWE, the tag champs, ex WWE. We got you, Jeremy. Neville or Pack, ex WWE. Wardlow's the only one who's, who's homegrown. Got, who's homegrown? Jade Cargill is homegrown. Thunder Rosa is homegrown, but Thunder Rosa had to pull out due to injury. Apparently so she new... has she has issues with disc in her back that yeah. she's been dealing with. So she that's why she got off. So now there's another interim championship situation, and if it goes the way I think it's going, and Tony Storm wins, that's another ex WWE person. Yeah. And all this, who's been your homegrown? 
Scorpio Sky got a deleted. He got deleted. Yeah, Sammy Guevara deleted. Okay, like where's Darby Allen has been deleted. Sting, I love Sting. You know this. Sting <laughs> yes. is my boy. But he held him down. Looks like he's now just he's an albatross around the neck of Darby Allen. Yeah. What the fuck is Darby Allen doing? This that that's lazy. That's lazy booking. Real quick, um, the Gun Club, aka the Ass Boys, do look like they would benefit in NXT. They look like they belong in NXT. I don't know if that's the characters and all that other shit, but I think when they find their way in AEW, they're gonna they're gonna pop off. Just right now, they seem very awkward. You know what? They have to they have to find a way to legit to legit. Go out on their own, away from Billy Gunn. Yeah, stop being the ass boys. Unless, either fully adopt it or get get yourself away from it. Where's Adam Cole? Isn't Adam Cole hurt? Yeah, Adam Cole's on the injured list. Yeah, because he, he hurt himself on um in Forbidden Door. Yeah, everybody is getting hurt all of a sudden. Yeah, you know, you know what it is that it's a result of we got to put on these high performance fucking matches. When it's not, Feasible, I'm not yeah. gonna say it's never necessary, but it's it's like, yo, we know you can wrestle. You don't have to show us. Yeah, sometimes the basics work. Yeah, it it's my problem with Cody Rhodes. I know you have a, a different problem with Cody, but my problem with Cody is you're not Jesus, bro. You don't have to kill yourself. Yeah, to get over. Because if you no, can yeah. fucking wrestle, we would fuck. We would still like you. Like you don't have to. Set yeah, yourself you, on fire and you go. Like, yeah, you go over the top. Like you don't need to be fucking wrestling um, Gilbert and going through eighty-seven tables. Yeah. And shit. All right. What about Hulk Hogan? If Hulk Hogan came to AEW, I wouldn't be as mad because Hulk Hogan isn't the WWE anymore. He's WWE, WCW. He's a legend. He's been in TNA. He's been he's been in every other company now. So if he came in, it's like yo, you're just doing it to sell tickets. John Cena. I would have to believe that he negotiated. I want the same WWE treatment. And and I'm sorry, there is no reality where I'm going to believe John Cena is going to another company and he's going to out-wrestle any one of them yeah. and win the fucking title. I'm sorry. That's not believable to me. That's bullshit, and I, I can't accept it. Yeah. For me to answer that question, a, I, I got on board with AEW. What up, Matt? Because Matt, I thought... Matt's in the building. Uh, what's up, Austin? I thought AEW was going to be the place where you can go and watch actual wrestlers actually wrestle. Yeah. So can tell you, I've, I've been a wrestling fan since, since Jump. But I've always been WCW, ECW, New Japan. I've always been everything outside of the WWE. No, it's true. I've watched the WWE... But I've been outside, and I thought AEW was going to be outside of that. But like we've established, that for some reason they're not making their own fucking stars. They they Sonny they Kiss changed the rest. Sunny Kiss showed up as a heel with Arya Davari, and I was like, "When the fuck did this happen?" Yeah, and maybe I should start watching Dark a little bit more. But they're not promoting it. They're not pushing it. It it Dude. seems like dark doesn't matter. Yeah. When if if like in the beginning when dark first came, they showed the records for everybody while they were on dark, and it seemed like when you wrestle on dark, it goes towards the whole thing. Dark is another show. So if you're undefeated on dark, you go there. But now it seems like dark is the developmental, and if you win on dark, woohoo! They just you yeah. just got you just got it in a YouTube channel, you know. Before we get to this question, I just want to point out for people who don't know me, uh, I go by Cap, but I always put a different thing in the name. Yeah. Ever since I found I can change it up, I would I just put something different and random. I got you. Just because I do that. <laughs> all right, all right. We're backed up in the in the comments, so if it takes us a little while to answer your question, we got you. But yeah, um, the storyline, everything looks the same. Everything looks the same in AW. It's like. You just said when uh, Christian got beaten, MJF and all that. To me, they're all saying the same shit, just different names are coming out of their mouth. But 
it doesn't seem weird to me. Any, like I said, man, someone else needs to be in that room thinking shit up. At the very least, he should go, all right, what's, what's the plan for this? I want, I want Moxie to be the champion. Moxie and Punk, how do you guys see yourself doing the storyline? Okay, I like your ideas. Let's tweak it this way. Because some of the best shit they did was when the, the, the Young Bucks and Cody was also in the room talking about the storylines. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the, when there's other people in the room talking back to you, that's where the ideas start flowing. You can't have a uh, barbed wire everywhere, sh a shark tank on a pole match, and have the, the elite in a shark tank where all of them can fit through the bars. Now it's no Jericho longer. Yeah, yeah, like, like <laughs> Yo, I don't understand. What, <laughs> what was the purpose what the of fuck that? Was the point of that? Yeah, Where she couldn't get the key. Well, fuck it, we we'll just walk out of the car. Yeah, <laughs> that was a cartoon shit. Well, the key Yo, don't work. Just open up the door. God, <laughs> God lot. forbid. God forbid somebody would have been over her cellars and fell through the bars when it was suspended. <laughs> right? Yo, Kofi says that he doesn't think that. Um, I honestly don't think Kenny is better than Daniel than Brian Danielson. My opinion, I I prefer the style of Kenny Omega, but it's a toss up with who you think is better technically. You know, it's not, I would have before we went to um, the Grand Slam in Arthur Ashe Stadium last year. I would have been one hundred percent Kenny Omega is the fucking better wrestler because. I don't believe Dan, Brian Danielson or Daniel Bryan or whatever you want to call him. I don't think he could have put on the match with Okada or Tanahashi or Naito in New Japan like Kenny did. True. I don't think he can. But then after seeing that match, they blend so well together that I could see an argument now. And plus, his match with Daniel Garcia, that that's the match I thought Punk was going to have with MJF because Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson, let me say it correctly, Brian Danielson made Garcia a star in that match. I, th I think he still won it, but he elevated Garcia yeah. well, in that match. I think he, he showcased Garcia's talent the best because Garcia, when he first came I, I felt like his talent was elevated. He was just being held down by the nasty yeah. boys. But but that's a star making turn, is what I'm saying. No, like, yeah, yeah, no, it's true. That's the that, that's, that's the, the pivot truth. point. Yeah, but but Brian is able to do shit like that. Where I thought Punk was gonna do that for MJF, and MJF was gonna hit the fucking stratosphere. Matt, when we call when we call them homegrowns, it's because. We know them off of AEW. You know, so like homegrown fade, like Derek Jeter was a baseball player before he was on the Yankees. But he's a homegrown Yankee talent because he didn't come from another team. He was like Wardlow. We know him in the beginning of AEW. He is an AEW original. Homegrown. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's where we're talking about. We're not saying that, oh, his first match ever was on AEW, and he never did nothing anywhere else. We know we're, that's not the case. We're like, uh, I saw earlier, you brought up Punk and um, Danielson and Claudio were in Ring of Honor. Yes, they were in Ring of Honor. But they didn't hit the stratosphere until they hit WWE. And now you come to AEW with Punk and Dan and Bryanson, Claudio maybe, you can make that argument. But Danielson and Punk? They are not coming in as Ring of Honor guys. They are coming in as the veterans from the WWE. Let's not yeah. make any fucking bones about that shit. Yeah. Keith and Lee especially is not coming in and swerve. They're coming in as the WWE guys. The, and and Jericho, like Cap said already, the WWE guy, but he traveled the world. ECW, WCW, New Japan, Mexico, Canada. He was all over the world before he went to WWE, but they make their bones. They make their name worldwide in the WWE. Like yeah. they, 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 you know, because and uh, you, you know, the reach that the WWE has is far greater than any other company. You know, like someone makes it their, 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 their name, like Will Ospreay, he makes his name in New Japan. But if he went to WWE and did what Brian Danielson did, he'll be a bigger name. 
matter of fact, Will Ospreay is a great, a great call right here because uh, as of right now, Will Ospreay is a New Japan guy. But if Will Ospreay was in was on the roster from day one, he'd have been an AEW guy. He'd have been one of the guys. I'm like, oh well, he's a homegrown that you could have did whatever. Because Hangman Page was in New Japan with the Bullet yeah. Club and what do you call it, Omega and all them, and they're homegrown guys. Christopher Run, <laughs> sub tone K Fab. I'm new here, guys, and yes, so this is my stripper name. But anyways, I hear another report: Thunder Rose is not hurt, and she's taking a break because. She had a fight with Britt Baker and and Jamie Hayter. That's why she dropped the belt. Which, yo, if that's the case, then there shouldn't be an interim title. Yeah, but see, here's the, this is what I'm saying that they're mismanaging shit. Because if you're gonna if if you're gonna have that big of a problem with two people in the back and Tony Khan can't squash that, half done the Rosa dropped the belt to Tony Storm then. Don't have her deal with Britt Baker. She drops the boat to Storm legitly. Storm gets the rub from Thunder Rosa. Finally wins a... Well, I mean, she was UK champ, but she finally gets a world title. And then she goes on to fight fucking Britt Baker. And Thunder Rosa can go off in the background and do some shit. That's a way better plan than fake an injury because two people in the back can't get a fucking long. Yeah. Like, what do you... My, I'm sorry. I'm, I just got to say this because no, I'm no. going to... I. I I would say this to anybody. Grow the fuck up. You have a problem with someone in the back, you're going to drop the title? You're going to take a leave of absence because you got into an altercation with, with other wrestlers? You're if supposed to be a case. mom. That, yeah, if that's the case. You're supposed to be a mom. She's supposed to be a doctor. You're grown women. You're intelligent. Grow the fuck up. Handle your beef or stay the fuck away from each other. It's not like she was wrestling Britt Baker every fucking Wednesday. Yeah. They haven't had a match since she won the title. Kingston suspended due to um, having a fist fight with Sammy. I heard that he almost slapped him, or he did slap him, but it was in the like it was real in the back. But Sammy was getting at his physique or some shit. I don't know. Yo, but see now, th- this is what I was gonna say, and all this is leading up to it. Right now, the what I think everybody's having a problem with AEW. <laughs> you broke is that, yeah. <laughs> But I think. Uh, everybody's having a problem with AEW is that Tony Khan is a wrestling fan and AEW looks like it's being run by a wrestling fan. Yeah. We don't need wrestling fans to run shows. We need actual people who know the business to get in there and run the shit properly. Like I said, you have Jerry Lynn, you have Dustin, you have the Malenko, you have Taz, you have William Regal. You have, to a certain extent, Tony Schiavone and uh, JR. You have people who've been around the business long You have enough. Serena Deeb. Yeah, you have Serena Deeb on the women's side. You, you, can, you can pretty much get anybody you want from the indies to come in. And as much as you may like him or not, you have Don Callis. You have people that you can put in charge to make sure your product is being run efficiently and being separated from what we're seeing in other companies. Yeah. No, but you know, you know, something he goes, um, yes, they are former workers, but they are still fans of it. Yeah. But yo, I've, I've said this on the turnbuckle taverns podcast. I said it on this podcast plenty of times. I'm going to say it again. Tony Khan seems like he is playing with his action figures and we're watching it live. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I agree like, with because if you notice, like in the beginning, when you only have these sets and it's like, are oh, these are new? Everyone's new. So I'm going to do something with everything. And then they get old and now you got the new guys. Like, oh, shit. Adam Cole is, on, is a target. I'm going to get him and he's going to be my champion now. I, uh, Moxie came. I got him in Toys R Us. Boom. And he's going to beat Jericho. And oh, shit. Omega's here. Get him in there. You know what I'm saying? I, I got Keith Lee. Fuck it, let's do with Keith Lee. And then everybody's like, yeah, but what happened to the other, the, the original toys you got? Your parents are looking at you like, but what about these toys? These toys ain't good? No, but they're old. They're old. Ain't nobody want to play with them no more. That's yeah. what I'm getting. That's the yeah. feeling I'm getting. Vince McMahon, for, for one second, I'm going to separate the personal shit. <laughs> He's getting worried. He's playing real life 2K. Yeah. I'm going to separate the personal shit from Vince McMahon for a second. When Vince McMahon went, I'm going to cut all these wrestlers. 
Karrion Cross, Swerve, you know, all these guys. He set the trap, and Tony Khan took. He fell into it. Yeah, he and did. Tony Khan was like, "Yo, let me swipe these guys up." And now, what the fuck are you gonna do with them? Hey, guys. What up, Gigi? What's up, Gigi? Hey guys. <laughs> Wait, do I sound normal? Do I sound like a robot? I need the feedback now. No, you sound no, good. good. You sound oh, good. I'm yeah, moving. you sound good. Yep, yep. <laughs> I want to make sure hear... I'm moving good too, just yeah. in case, yep. you know. Moving, grooving. We even hear the engine. Stream. I don't know why We even hear the engine. Moves, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to turn off my mic a couple times because... Because there we go. Yo, I, there we go. I, I drove down her block. I know why they do that shit now. I know Wait, why that, they do that. That's an actual car? <laughs> yes. The block is about that thin, and everyone wants to double park. So I know why they do that shit. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. That is, that is why. And it's just, and there's no, like, there's, like, no bump on the road for, like, hey, no. That's more down. More down the block, if anything. Yes. Um, <laughs> so. Matt, I did not meet Willow. Like, I've seen him. I met Brooke Valentine. Because she was talking to you, Gigi, right? And then right. Um, I got to meet your trainer, uh, Steve Pena. We actually spoke about you, Matt. <laughs> during the times. after the show. Yeah. Dream, I got my shirt waiting for the right time to rock it. My guy! Yes! Yes! East Coast, West Coast, we going for the win, baby! Um... I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad that everything's working out right now. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I did, by the way, step into the building at 1010, just to let you know. All right. It's just, all good just things, man. Just 15 minutes. All good things. All yeah, good all good things. things I love man. it. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that you love it, Dream. Oh, man, what he said. I'm scared. Ah, all good things. Yeah, all yeah. All good things. These was like, he's is like, oh, dope as fuck. Yeah. He was like, yo, you, I was like, yo, Matt Awesome, I went to high school. And he was like, word? I trained Matt. I was like, word? He's like, yeah. So it was, you know, all good shit. Don't worry about it. He didn't, he didn't tell me those embarrassing stories that you don't want to know about. But if you want to see it, <laughs> join, our, join the, the Patreon now. Nah, <laughs> 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 oh, shit. That's dope. Um, very excited. It was a very amazing night. I was definitely listening to what you guys were saying. There's a lot of things that was in the chat, and I'm yeah. just like, there's a lot of AEW stuff that we just, yeah, it, it got to pour. <laughs> <laughs> just, it, that's that's, that's how it sounds like it's gonna be. <laughs> We're going for the win and just straight from the bottle. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> no, but oh yeah. Oh my god. It, Beautiful. I'm still being a lady. You know, I got to drink out of a cup. Nah, yeah, Matt, that would have been awesome if he was there, man. Definitely. Um, It was good. We even talked to uh, Pete Rosado um, yep. for a few. Um, Homeboy was supposed to leave the event a lot earlier than what he said he was going to leave. Uh, <laughs> but it was good <laughs> shooting this shit with him. Um, And it was great because he was like, yeah, he's wrestling for my promotion today. And I'm going to go there soon. And, da, 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 da. and I was like, oh, cool. Um, Two hours later, he's still I'm there. Very, it was, it's just, a, yeah, an hour later. And so I was like, yo, ain't that Pete? Ain't, <laughs> didn't he say he was going to leave? Like at like three something? No? Not, he ain't still leave. He left. The, he was supposed <laughs> to leave before the, the kickoff. The kickoff was done. Bell rang at three. He was supposed to leave at yeah. 40 something. It was at the intermission. Four o'clock like. came. Where? Four o'clock came. He was still there. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, but it 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 was definitely a uh, one in the books. I would definitely say. Uh, damn. Yeah. No, Matt. We heard that you lost that match. It's all right. Listen, you win some, you lose some. At the end of the day, though, yeah. you still you got your pride, and you're. That's it. And the and, uh, and 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 the and the oversized chancleta. Word. I yep. don't know, man. That, yo, Matt, that somebody didn't bless that with the holy water. But yo, Matt, if it makes you feel any better, Gigi's daughter was beating the shit out of me with her chancleta the whole fucking night. <laughs> I got I'm still editing some video clips. I didn't realize how many videos I actually took, and I was like, oh shit. I took a lot. I took like 
like a minute here, two minutes here, a minute here, two minutes. I was like, yo, it took a lot more than I, what I initially thought. Yeah. Um, but Matt, I, I, I got to send you the uh, clips. Uh, and I'm going to put together something. Maybe on, I can talk to Dave. Uh, what's up, Henny? What's good, baby? Um, and uh, yeah, man, I, I got to put these clips together and everything like that. Henny yeah. Wrestling was definitely part of Jobber Slam, too. Um, he also sponsored one hell of a match as well. Um, it was just great vibes. Yeah. You know, Cap, I wish, oh, excuse me, k -Fab, I wish you were there. <laughs> He's not Cap today. He's k -Fab. Yeah. <laughs> Like I explained earlier, the, the, what I write in there is just random fun shit. <laughs> Chilling, honey. Yo, yo, Matt, he said that He's he said that he Matt felt today. like That's his it. match. So. <laughs> Matt, remember, bro. If we not winning, we learning. So if if the match didn't go the way you wanted to, just learn from it, man. You know you know how that shit goes, bro. You know how that shit goes. You keep your fucking head up because you're doing shit that a bunch of us wish we can do, and you're fucking doing it. So don't give me this bullshit that the match sucks. You sit there and you learn from the fucking shit because if you're not WWE champion by the end of 2025, I'm fucking someone up. And that and that's my inspirational quote for the week. Uh oh, Gigi's frozen now. Fucking Steve came in. Which one of y'all motherfuckers brought Steve here? <laughs> Gigi's frozen. But oh, I thought you was frozen too. I was about to be no, like, I'm, everybody's frozen. Run! No, Everyone's fucking good. frozen. I'm just letting you rent. <laughs> no, yeah, I got to. I'm, I'm gonna let her unfreeze on the side so that way she's not stuck there all day. But yeah, but yeah. Oh, here she goes. One of these motherfuckers bring Steve in here. You was good. You was good until they started coming in. That was in. great. I, I started hearing your voice go, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I was like, oh, damn, they got me. They got me. It was a power. <laughs> there was a, there's an outage. There's an outage with Optimum in Brooklyn where I was at. I didn't think it was going to follow me, but it definitely followed me. You're what's good, pro wrestling. We see you, Dave. Um Word. Oh, okay, but, okay. Yeah, man. Guerrero style. Yeah. Hey. I have a question for you guys. How was this, a, being that I've never went to an indie uh, wrestling event live, how did this event compare to going to, like, one of the tent poles live? It was, it was actually refreshing to see people that I wasn't familiar with do things and then to buy into their gimmick. It was almost like more accepting to see someone do some like show would be like, yo, that took a long time for him to throw him out of the, the turnbuckle. But then they went into a series like move after move after move after move after move after move. And shows like no wonder he took so long to tell him what to do. But to buy into those gimmicks and, and everything is just it felt more engaging. Absolutely. You know, not for that. Yeah. Um, this like, was my second event that I went to um, and to be honest with you the second event was oh many mentals they're smarties is it going to make me smarter yeah. how did you like the event on Saturday I loved it. you loved it hey say hi yeah, that's right look at that face <laughs> mm -hmm. I had to I had to with the chocolate that when we went to the event <laughs> Mm -hmm. She made she made me go running for my life in front of uh, yep. Willow oh. Nightingale. Oh, okay, that goes I on was... the right side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just take the whole thing. You embarrass right. me in front of all the wrestlers. Embarrass him. <laughs> that was then she my to make attention. That was... that was my attention. <laughs> that was your inten intention. Intentions. Good job. <laughs> well, you did it. <laughs> and then uh, who who told him to stay still? Brooke, right? Don't do that. Don't fuck with my shit. <laughs> so, who who told them? To, who told you to beat him up? Brooke Valentine. Yeah. 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 And I pushed you. Yeah, yeah. I'm and stronger you, you, than you. And you if, if Brooke Valentine wasn't hurt, I think she would have got Brooke Valentine to beat me up because I got threatened by Brooke, Brooke, Brooke Valentine also. But you still drove us home, and your butt was still sitting on it. But, and you but said you, know, you, you wouldn't be able to get to sit anymore. Oh, so hmm. I, ha I have a donut that I'm sitting on because it's still sore. <laughs> 
but no, I don't. got my I got my boy Big Cuzzo to protect me though at the end. Close to the mic. My man, that big guy that was helping me out at the end, Big Cuzzo, he was yo, he flung someone. Yeah, in that man. battle, yo, my man. That battle, threw, well, he fucking yeah. threw someone. <laughs> yeah, he flung him like easy light work, and my man had to be what six 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 seven. He's a big dude because you know my height, and he's he was towering over me, you know, because I'm yo I'm the tallest New York City podcaster. It's been proven I am the tallest New York City podcaster in history. <laughs> That's right. Don't 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 agree with that, now. Now give me back my headphones. Go back to your YouTube. Back up. Back up, hey, ma'am. Headphones, mine. Thank you. Oh, you're so kind. Go ahead. Watch your YouTube. I think she yeah. your popcorn. Mommy has her own teddy bear. Yeah, nice. give me it. No, go. Just go. Give me my teddy bear. I'm about to fling the teddy bear over the top rope, too. <laughs> yeah, I, was was that? I think she hit you so hard that you got brain damage now. I think so. She kept hitting me in my in my in my in my brain damage. <laughs> the five point match, was that the one that Mike Colossus won? No, Colossus Mike won? Uh, the five, the five points, points match. No, that was the, the battle weight. That was, that was yeah. no, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the five points match was with Steve Benny. It was the first match of the night. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah that first was match dope. of the afternoon, I should say. Um, but yeah, that was a uh, because he's the five points champion. Yeah, so, I kind of like picking uh, juicy. I kind of like that match. Juicy. The oh, well, that wasn't thick and juicy. That was just that was, thick. That was thick and the Gia. juicy part was a uh, was side <laughs> yeah. Line, all right? Yeah, yeah. Um, that was thick, thick and Gia. My bad. But yeah, thick and Gia. <laughs> Gia Scott definitely did her thing, and man, yeah. and it was such an exciting match between um, ring leader Midas and Blazing Lion. Um, there was so much. Uh, also, big shout out to Ham Wrestler, who I'm now following. Ham Wrestler is this oh, wrestler yeah. who has a luchadora mask that is a pig. And the fact that he gave Riley his pink cape, because he's a super, you know, superhero. You know, you know what they say when pigs fly, he gonna fly. All right. The, the, oh, you, yeah. know, you know what your old school saying? Yeah, sure, when pigs fly. We're gonna find a video of that guy. All right. And we're gonna watch him fly. And then we're gonna have a kid just go up to somebody like, hey. Remember you told me that one time I can get this when pigs fly? Oh, uh, pigs are flying. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, Matt asked who stood out to you on uh, Saturday. There was a couple of people. The dude that came out to the Jagged Edge song, for some reason, I forgot. I don't know yo, the names. The, oh, everyone, where, uh, you know me, I don't know. Pants? He had the pink sweatpants with the bandana. The um, pink so oh, the Jagged Edge song. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Party song. It was a party song. Yes. Yeah, with a party at that one. Yeah, yeah. He oh, stood out thing. to me just his appearance. He stood out to me. There was another dude that came out singing his own song, and when he did a, a like a, a arm lock on the other guy, he used his hand to sing into. That was dope. Uh, 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 yo, um, every yo, the fucking guy. I don't know his name. I follow him on Instagram. The one that flipped over the over the top rope. I showed the video earlier. Oh, the big dude. What, oh, you did. That big, yeah, um, I have it. I have it on my Instagram. The well, I don't have it on my Instagram. I saved it on Instagram, but um, the, I'll look. Oh, I, I'm gonna look for it again because that look dude for it, flew. Uh, he just he flew. My man flew. Up. Yo, he yo, he has to be like 350 easy. 350 easy, man. There's no maybe yeah, no not, business. No, plan. I don't think he was 350. I don't, I, maybe not 350. 350 is a lot, bro. Look, that's him like, right there. Yo, that's a big dude. He's six something. That's a big dude. Big... Look, look at my man just Wang. <laughs> yo, I can't stop. And then you see, yo, you see us in the back here. Look, look, look at us. That <laughs> old one went crazy. You see us in the back. We went crazy. <laughs> we went crazy for that. That was, oh, yo, that was shit. pop of the night. That, Yo, was that, was, the night. that was the pop of the uh, that was the pop of the night the pop of the event app that was the holy shit moment of the event because we were like we were it was something that was unexpected and we were like oh he's probably gonna go to the new oh my god he went to the top oh yeah. we, all of us legit was like oh shit 
oh, yeah. oh my God, yo, yo, what the fuck? And that's it. It was the holy shit moment of the yes. day. Yes. Um, yes. And so amazing. And, the, and 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 the ref, yo, this ref, I swear to God, doesn't know how to count to three. But he comes out in the gray sweatpants battle royal, and he's like a fake fake ass Montel. Oh, that's that's, <laughs> that's Nick. He that's grabs the, the other Nick. guy. He has the, he grabs the other ref's ass, and then he flicks the dick of the of another ref, and he gets in the ring, and he's trying to grind on Savannah. And I know Savannah's name because she got some nice eyes. But he she's a wrestler that won the fucking battle royal, and yo, all of them pick his ass up and fling him over the top rope. I'm like, my man, what are you doing? You acting mad sus right now. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on, right? What's that going would on, be right? referee Nick Shin. And Nick Shin came out <laughs> with the only R and B music, that '90s baby making love music, and word, and I word. tell you. That that was that was the key sweat of the night. All right, the <laughs> key sweat where he sweat pants. All right? right. That's what he was doing, and the ladies went wild for him. Faith no, that's even trying to throw a doll at him and everything like that. Yeah, like no, yeah. Said, he, was, he was trying to get too comfortable with Savannah, and uh, you know, my man that, was yes. just got thrown out. So it's big time, yeah, or whatever. Big time, but, yeah, no, for yeah. that big guy that uh, flew over the top. Yes. Yeah. Nice. But no, he, yeah, she is a beast. But <laughs> that was fucking crazy to see, because you know sometimes like I'm not really the the type that goes that's outgoing when I don't know people. But to see this shit, it made it so comfortable to start yelling at people. The dude with the shoulders that that Dirty Heels sponsored, yo. The funny thing is the Dirty Heel sponsored this guy. And at the end of the match, he goes to kick a little girl. And then we find out that was Kofi's daughter. <laughs> He's going to kick the daughter of the guy that sponsored him. <laughs> I was weak. I was weak. Yeah. I was like, yo, he's that mad. He's fucking about to hit children. And I was like, yo, shit, that's Kofi's kids. Maybe that's Kofi probably said, yo, scare my kids real quick. <laughs> Oh shit, that shit had me in tears. Yo, Matt, oh, you, man. you know me, player. If you was in there, I'd have went crazy. My man, I'm known. losing my shit on the regular for certain big pops and everything like that. Like yeah. there's no doubt about it that at some point towards like maybe the second half of the show, you definitely just kept hearing my voice just laughing and screaming, like, yeah. Cause we do get him, get him. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like looking at different videos, and I can hear myself, and I'm like, damn, my voice fucking travels. Oh my lord. <laughs> Yo, Apparently, that, yeah. I travel too because I got into <laughs> one of the videos with Steve Benya. I was just getting myself a drink, and I was like, oh shit, Steve Benya. <laughs> He's eating Don't a cup. Match. <laughs> Thanks. So I was like, yeah, you need a cupcake. I'm like, damn, cupcakes looks good. He was like, it's going to be fucking great right now. And I was like, that's dope. And then all of a sudden, I'm like looking over my shoulder and whoever's coming out of the ring, I'm like, oh, um, so they're talking shit to you right now. And it's literally, you just see the camera on him just trying about to eat his cupcake. I was like, yo, he's, he's talking mad shit. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Why are we it getting was <laughs> It's funny because I'm looking, I'm like, oh shit, Gigi's talking to C Payne. And I was like, so is that guy? And he's just like, <laughs> he, was, no, he was about to go in. He didn't go in on the cupcake yet. He was like, ah, ah. Yeah. you see him turning his head like, I was ready to hold me? the cupcake for him just in case he had to go in and stuff like that. I don't know if he would have got the cupcake back, but I, I was ready to hold that cupcake for him. Yeah, and, and the crazy shit, all you see is a chocolate cupcake and a fucking red ass chest oh my, my man, god his chest was bro it looked like a kendall stick beat his ass in the chest and they were just chopping Yo, each other his chest was fucking lit on fire and that's just, that's just, that was the i was like hey what's up wow your chest is red like wow he was like yeah it hurt a lot worse earlier now i'm just getting used to it and i'm just like <laughs> you can get used to that what <laughs> like in my head i'm like what like Red, yeah. like sheesh. Yeah. People were getting me a yim to chop them. 
Like they were like, "Yo, chop me!" And I in my head, I was like, "My chest hurts from that first match. I don't need me and Yim to chop me. I'm good." <laughs> my chest hurts just for watching that shit. That's the one thing I never understood is fans like going up to wrestling like, "Yo, hit me, hit me!" Like, why? Why? I don't get it, man. That's got to be some weird shit in the back of people's heads. Yeah, it's like a fetish. I mean, yo, not for nothing. The kick demon. Um, it's funny you said her name Kai. like two days ago. Kai, like I know her. I, you know it is. I can say it, but when I'm trying to fucking think about it, I can't say a fucking name. The kick demon. What's her name? Gigi. Kai. Janiaka. Janiaka. There you is go. It Jani- is it Janiaka? Is it Janiaka? Gen- yes. Janai. 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 Oh, See? There's an no, extra. No, pro- There's an eye somewhere. There's lots of eyes. Hold on. I'm hot. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, oh, Pro God, said I'm it. Sorry. I wouldn't mind No, kick, we know how to spell it, Pro. We just can't <laughs> pronounce it. That's our yeah, fucking that's, problem. Yeah, that's the problem. Yes, again, Penny, we know how to spell it. Pronunciation is the problem. Okay, there you go. Jen, Jen I, Kai. Kai. Okay, Jen I, Kai. Kai. Jen I, Kai. Thank you. Thank you, yes. you Pearl. Yes. I just want to say, I think, I just, think if I'm not just, mistaken, just, I think it's, uh, I think it's J A N A I K A I. J A N A I. You know something? Yeah, yeah, that I think that's what it is. What's going on, Parker? Yo, Matt, the your boy, the yellow superhero, funny as shit. <laughs> he was outside the ring. The guy with the cape and during that um the, oh, the one that might the, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. The one that was wrestling <laughs> with the cape the whole time. Yes. I was like, yo, my man ain't gonna take that cape off. And they're like, nah, he don't do that. I'm like, what? Like, does he not watch Incredibles? No capes. No capes. Oh, that's what <laughs> <laughs> no capes. <laughs> Tell him to watch Incredibles, Matt. <laughs> He's very dangerous out there with the cape. What no, if he gets stuck to a nuke? <laughs> Even Superman at this time says somebody pulled down his damn cake and brought his ass down. Come on Word. now. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> For real. <laughs> Jake the Snake's still alive. Yes, he's still Let, alive. Yeah, and let's yes. not wish him death, please. <laughs> For please. real. <laughs> please. And I don't we already almost years. lost one wrestler this year, and that's because he he wanted to have one last match. And I don't. I think um, I'm okay without losing any more wrestlers for the rest of the year. Like I'm, I, I think I'm at my cap. I'm, I'm at my, I'm at, I'm at, I, I'm there. We're already there. Yeah. We don't need any yeah. more wrestlers to die. The word. Last, He's uh, wrestling this last Sunday last at Hog time, Wrestling. Oh, the- oh yeah. Cap said he met Jake the Snake last Comic Con. I met him a couple of times. Yeah, I met him. I met RVD. Same. There was uh, uh, Jerry the King Lawler was there too, but he's always. uh, I met him once before. I didn't need to see him again. (laughs) Smart. Word. No, same. (laughs) Um, I met Jerry. I met JR. I met, um, I remember meeting Jake the Snake Roberts when I was cosplaying as Batgirl, and I have a picture of me and him just throwing up the middle finger. Um, <laughs> he was great. He was like, let's take a good, a nice family photo. Let's take a family photo. All right, Jake. Family photo. <laughs> all right. <laughs> let's take one that's not so funny. Mm. I was like, all right, Jake. Mm. <laughs> word. I mean, it's Jake the Snake. You got to shit. You got to. He ain't no That's family it. friendly. My yo, man got a fucking cobra to buy macho man. I'm gonna buy, I'm I'm buy a fake snake. I'm gonna be like, can you sign my rubber snake for me? <laughs> I bet you that wasn't that wouldn't be the first time we've done it. No, it wouldn't be. Probably not. <laughs> yo, R- shit, RVD. When I met him, he gave me a wrestling name, Victorious Vic. Oh Victor- shit. Okay. Okay. Log off and there come back as Victorious Vic, please. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a wrestling podcast. We need your wrestling. Yo, yo, uh, you, you guys will be happy to know that I said it was nice to meet Mia Yim and not it was meet to nice you. Because I was kind of fucking nervous taking that picture with her. And oh Laura God, Charles said it was nice to meet me. <laughs> Laura Charles said it was nice to meet me. So fuck all y'all. You know what I'm saying? If you don't get that reference, your grow up. picture 
Your picture with Mia Yang. You were like. You know what it was? I was trying to. I was, I was trying to do the like, oh shit, it's me and Yim, but she put up the deuces. So I was like, fuck. I put up, the, but my face never really changed from the, the shit because the dude took the picture while I was in mid character change. I was like, God damn it, motherfucker, give me two seconds. Oh, two seconds. Man. Can you sign my real snake for me? <laughs> Can I also pull out? You know what I'm going to do, bro? Just to be an asshole. I'm gonna unzip my pants and pull out the snake. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> my snake is longer than yours. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I'm fucking weak. Miriam is definitely dope as fuck. Um, man, Thanks, I wanted bro. to ask her so many questions, but unfortunately, because of a major creepo, um, uh, a major creepo was basically kind of like following me because he recognized me from a different yeah. show that I did in public access, which we're not going to mention here because I don't need you guys to start Googling this shit. Uh, yeah. But I, like, my man couldn't fucking read the room. And he's like, you have TikTok, you have it, and he's an older guy. Like, I like, I don't mind. Listen to me now, fans. All right, I don't mind you guys coming up to me saying, "Yo, you're a Gigi for the win." Love your page, cool podcast. Nice to meet you guys. Knuckleheads, cool. Wrestling related, sure. Anything that I did prior to wrestling related, and I'm looking at you like. Yeah, so I haven't done that show in over 13 years, yet you're still bringing it up. And then you bring up some of my friends that are still running certain shows, okay? Um, and then you try to play them, not realizing that I'm still friends with them, and then I just yeah. have to shut your shit down. All right, understand something. Don't come up to me with that shit. Don't. Good word. Uh, don't come up. Yeah. If you can't read the fucking room, and I'm like, ah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, okay. And it was it was apparent. Yeah. She wasn't she wasn't doing no side. Sh it was like uh she had the look of get the fuck away from me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, we all seen the look of get the fuck away from me from a woman and Gigi had that shit down pat. Yo. <laughs> I don't play. My face expressions will tell you how I honestly feel about you. Okay? <laughs> if I'm yeah. cool with you, I'm like I'll look at you maybe so I'm like I don't like you. You know, like for fun, Word. for shits and gigs. But yeah. my real, please hold. But my real face would be like, uh huh. Yeah. No. Y yeah. No. Yeah. No. So, um, I haven't done that show in like thirteen years. You know that, right? Yeah. Like I my still talk to them, but I, yeah, no, no. And then I'm trying to. I'm looking at Toe, mind you. This time I'm looking at Toe. And I'm just like, somebody call my name. Somebody else call. Somebody say, oh, gee, come here. Somebody somebody say something to me. And the only person that really kind of saves me, besides Toe being with my witness there, is my child. Yeah. That's like, hey, mom. And I'm like, yes, child. What is it, golden child? I am, I am at your mercy. Yes. Talk to me. What, what is it? You, you yeah. want a sandwich from the Bronx? I got you. <laughs> word, word. Anything to get me out of here. Talk to me. Um, My man was asking for her TikTok, and I'm like, what? You know, even I did the what? <laughs> You're asking for a TikTok? He was like, Yo, you got out TikTok? of all the social media. I'm like, yeah, but I don't, I don't, I don't really, I don't mess with it. I don't understand it. So I don't, I don't, I, I'm just on Instagram and Twitter. Yeah. And that's about it. Oh, I follow you on Facebook. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't go on that. Like, I legit said, yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't go on that. Yeah, it was bad. Like she said English words, but in translation, every single word out of her mouth is "fuck off, get away from me." <laughs> that, that, that's what she, that's what she meant. Fuck off and get away from me, sir. Please. <laughs> that was essentially <laughs> it. Like, so. Can you go back to your family and, and leave me alone? And then the what, craziest part is that I wasn't the only one he was asking TikToks for. Because when I came back, 
um, from talking to me again and everything like that and having my pictures between, you know, me, my daughter, and just having the autographs and just having a good moment with me again. Um, I was selling toe, so somebody recognized me from another show that I did years ago. I don't do the show anymore. And um, it was just really weird. And then maybe about two minutes after that is when the guy shows up. And then the time when I was hanging out over there with me again, he was asking me again, is this your TikTok? What about this one? She's like, the whole time, I don't have TikTok. I don't have TikTok. Yeah, no, that's not me. That's a fake. Yeah, no, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't have TikTok. And then he was like, okay, so I have me again, uh, 24 official. It says official. Yeah, that's not me. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah. So it's a fake. Okay, what about me again, TNA? Yeah, I don't that's have it. TikTok. You won. And I Yo, just kept dude. looking at her like, let me save her. Hey. Yo, Henny. And she looked at me. I looked at her. I was like, hey. Yo, Henny. If I show this you the guy, you're going to know who I'm talking about, bro. Yeah. You're going to Yo, know who was, I'm talking about. He was I'll weird be right because back, at, at one when I first saw him, I was like, this old nigga? <laughs> like, it literally, I was like, my man, you got to be in your 50s, 60s. What are you doing? Like, what are you doing talking to her, you hornball motherfucker? But, yo, Henny, when I took a picture with me and him at the end... There was a dude talking to her. I don't know what they were saying, but the handler was like, this nigga's crazy, so give him a second. And I'm like, all right. And then I didn't even, like, I had my arm behind me. I didn't even put it around her. Like, I didn't touch her at all. I was like, listen, I'm not associated with any of these creepos that fucking spoke to you. I just want a picture. And to say, it's nice to meet you. That's it. Please. I don't want to do the Sasha Banks where I got to stand on the other side of the borough to take a picture with you. Just, I'm not a threat. <clears throat> I like the way you wrestle. My brother's a fan. Thank you. Me to nice you. <laughs> but yo, but homeboy with Gigi was on some real shit. Like my man was like, you got an Amazon Prime. My man Dave with the sh with the side with the side comments. But not for real. It was crazy. <laughs> yo, I to be honest, it looked like people knew him. You know what I'm saying? Like it looked like like he wasn't. Like friends with people, but for it looked like he was like he's one of the regulars. You know what I'm saying? To me, at least, I don't know who he is. Maybe he's not, but he looked like he was. He might have been a regular and been there for a while. You know, what I'm saying? am I am I wrong in saying that? G? He looked like he was a regular. Like he was in the VIP seat or the front seats. Yeah, he would be a regular. Um, definitely. What a fool that anyone tell him. So, Matt, I, I don't know who he is. I don't know. I don't care to know on top of that. Um, if I try to f go through my Facebook and see who my common friends am I, you know, with and stuff like that with one other individual, I might be able to find him. Um, screenshot it and send it to you, absolutely. Um, but he, I don't, I don't know. He's just, he was weird. Um uh, yeah. Honey, if you rem oh, man, I can't even say. It. I don't want to I don't want to put him out there, but I again, I don't fucking care. But it was some some Moreno dude with a bright blue, baby blue do rag on. Like my man, who still wear, wears do rags at this point? Where like, he would look like no hold board. <laughs> like <laughs> I found you on baby face and begins to breathe even heavier. <laughs> Weirdest part is when she was started at, when he started asking her about her friends. He's like, "Yeah, yeah, I don't like him with the beard." And in my head, I'm like, "You really give a shit about this man's beard? Like, why are you trying to really say that you know these people?" And your DJ was like, like, "I like him with the beard." <laughs> like you Yo, know him. Yeah. Like he's one of your people's. I don't like him with his beard. And I'm like, "Well, yeah, I fucking she, do." And he's my gave, friend. You piece of shit. Yeah, she gave the attitude like if he would have been like, "Yo, you know he killed my cousin." Gigi would have been like, "Fuck your cousin." <laughs> Yo, that's the vibe I was getting from Gigi. She was Yo, like, "Fuck your cousin anyway." <laughs> I I just want to put it out there, somewhere in this world, 
this dude's watching right now, crying into like a tub of ice cream. Like I thought Gigi liked me. Good. Stay the fuck away from him, please. <laughs> and I just and, got and stay away from me. <laughs> 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 I just found her. She, she Gigi for the win twenty five, right? Oh shit! Oh man! I quit. <laughs> Yo, I'm fucking weak right now. Oh man! You want to shout out your TikTok? Well, no, he does fucking shit on one of my friends and his beard. And I'm like, I've been knowing this particular person with no facial hair. And he looked always weird to me in some sort of way because he was a really tall, skin, kind of skinny guy. So it, it just, it didn't, it didn't, it, it didn't give me the full picture. Now, years and years on, all right, and I've been knowing this, this guy for over 10 years now, okay, um, he has this immaculate beard and such a great one of those mustaches where you just twist it and it just curls at the end, like like he's from the Mustache Mountain Bros. All right, and I am talking about <laughs> yeah. NXT UK. Okay, for those who don't know, definitely look them up. All right, Mustache Mountains. He had that type of mustache that curls up, and I'll show you a picture of him too, Tony, in just a second. Um, and I. I find it to be, ve- it looks really good on him. Like, you know what? That's what, what was missing. That whole facial look, that's that's what was missing from you. And I honestly, in my true opinion, I think he looks absolutely amazing with it. And the fact that he tried to shit on my boy about it, I just went ahead and, and did what I would do for my friends. I'm going to shut that shit down and I'm going to make you feel this fucking big. Because you guys believe yeah, I came at him with the whole the fuck you talking about? First and foremost, you've never known him to be like this. All right, I have. I've seen him before and i see him after. His shit is immaculate. All right, his shit is popping. All right, I've seen him without facial hair and with the facial hair. He looks damn good with it. So I don't know what you're talking about, but I don't think he needs to shave his beard for anybody or anyone. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, I mean, it's all right. It's all right. Oh, you changed your vo- Oh, you changed your opinion? Oh, yeah, it's she, all right she now? She killed his soul with that one. <laughs> Fuck that. Yo, Matt. <laughs> Yo, Matt goes, if I was there... Don't know how I rose since high school. You've been saved. Gigi didn't need to be saved. I'll tell you that shit right now. Gigi did not need to be saved, bro. <laughs> she had I don't need no saving. I got this. Shit. Don't let this skinny bitch was- fool you, all right? Yeah. I'm a slim, thick chick, all right? Yeah. Slim at the top, thick at the bottom. And if I got to use my <laughs> bottom to hurt somebody, so be it. But <laughs> you might like that, so we can't do that, so... I but got the chair. He was a safe distance away. You know what I'm saying? Like he was in, he was like two rows away plus behind the guardrail. No, so that's what I'm saying. He was a uh, 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 definitely a row and then the guardrail. That's the funniest thing. He was talking to me over the guardrail. Yeah. Like right next to the ring over the guardrail. Yo, I got a glimpse. GG, I found a glimpse of him. I found a glimpse of him, GG. I just got to pause this video at the right. Yeah, I, I got to pause the video at the right time and I missed it. But I got a glimpse. I'm going to pause it. You want me to show? Yo, uh, when I get it, I'm going to so show it. you, motherfucker. So, change the place so feed. Hold the place feed down. Hey, this is on Instagram. Oh. Yeah, it's like... You're welcome for your 15 seconds of yo, frame. He is from yo, Brooklyn. It, you definitely don't need to... Facts. I reside in the Bronx, but this bitch was born and breathed in fucking Brooklyn. That's right. I was born and raised in Brooklyn, y'all. I just reside in the Bronx because rent is better. <laughs> All right. Hell of a lot cheaper. Shit. Oh, you heard man. it here. Bronx is better than Brooklyn. <laughs> Rent wise, yes. Unless yeah, you were a rich yeah, bitch, every, then you can live in Brooklyn wants. all you want. But nah, <laughs> nah I'm good. <laughs> oh, man. I'm weak right now. 
Yeah, I, hold on. I'm going to try to get this shit. It was like a split second, but you get him. Got it. You're going to get right. him. I fucking, I can't. My man right here. My man right here. That's him. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Fuck. shit. Hold on. Let me I, see. I zoomed in too much. <laughs> oh, my heavens. Oh, my heavens. We're going to find this. We're going to find this battle club pro. Oh, man. My, 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 my man right here. Yo, I am fucking weak right now. The fact that you that found was... a little glimpse of him has me fucking weak. Oh, Yo, cause man. Because I remember Sir Wink, uh, Wilkins doing this this promo, and I'm like, he was on that side of the, the, the ring. So he mm -hmm. had to be sitting there somewhere. So I watched the whole thing, and it went to it was like, I got him. I got this motherfucker. Yo, he's wearing a bandana. He's doing the no host bard, Hulk Hogan. All we need is a bunch of kids around him in a fucking uh, helicopter. <laughs> That's it. Yo. For real. That's so bad. Like, I'm trying to, like, look to see if there's any more, like, photos. And so I can just, like, I can this to you. But that shit had me laughing. Oh, man. Yeah, man. Don't come and up said, I should... Don't ever come up to me about some shit or some work that I did over 13 plus years ago. Like, you a fan? Cool. Don't be a fucking creep. Because the minute yeah, you decide to be a fucking creep, I'm going to show you why I was that fucking bitch. And I'm not the one to fuck with. And then you're going to have Toe trying to hold me back. As I'm throwing a chair in there to start a fucking riot, because that's what I learned from the boondocks. <laughs> Word. A chair, start a riot. <laughs> Word. Yeah, no, don't that's what I'm talking about. Search it up. That's <laughs> the difference between me and Toe. Toe will be trying to hold you back. I'd be like, well, fuck it. If you're swinging up with this person, I'm going to hit somebody else. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to hit the child on the side. I see Gosh. you looking. <laughs> I don't, I don't and you know what the know. thing is, is that the, per the person he was with and everything like that, she, she um, was definitely, you know, uh, on the autistic side and everything like that. And it was really sweet to see that. But him as an individual approaching, his approach was just wrong. Yeah, it was um, creepy. And I think it was creepy. And his approach shouldn't be that way. Like, don't approach me on a creepy fucking video. This is your TikTok? You got TikTok? You got TikTok? Like, don't come at me like that. Don't come at me like he dead ass was like, I know you. I know you from somewhere. And I'm like, well, I'm one of the sponsors in the show. Nah, nah. I know, I know you from I know you from Facebook. Yeah, I have one of those too. <laughs> <laughs> Gigi's awesome. Yep, I have Facebook. Yep, I'm the sponsor. Well, uh, do you know me because I'm from New York? All right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just see me I'm at the bar getting sandwiches? I'm a girl. Hey. Yeah, that's, that's me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, last time I checked. Yeah. I, I tell you right now, I'm learning so much. Now I know how to approach people because I would. I would have just went, I'm like, uh, uh, the computer, you, no, right. that, that would have, that would have felt less creepy, to be honest with you. <laughs> Yo, for real, I think it definitely would have been like, I would have been like, the fuck happened to that guy? Sorry. <laughs> you would have just chalked you up as, as, as a tart and just been like, he's all right, the, there's something wrong with him. Make -A he's from the Make-A-Wish Foundation. I got it. <laughs> for real. Battle Club yeah. Pro is sponsoring a Make-A-Wish. <laughs> Damn. Damn. But what was really cool, though, <laughs> to, to, to get all, there was Word, a little baby in the front row. And every one of the wrestlers gave that baby a fist bump. It had that. They had the the um the head thing, and the baby was like, yeah, yeah. and like the parents oh. put the fist out, and all the wrestlers no. gave. 
best oh, part the about that baby was when the wrestler put a sticker on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. And the baby is just like, ah, ah. the baby had to be about a month, a couple weeks old. A couple weeks old at that. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> But he definitely put a star sticker on the baby's forehead. And <laughs> yeah. I wish this fuck like, why would you do that to an infant? Don't put a sticker on the fucking baby's head. <laughs> the fucking <laughs> doing? The kid is like, wait, they got his phone, because you know, the sound <laughs> yeah. and everything was as loud for an infant as it yeah. would be. And you see it's a big ass star that's bigger than his fucking face. Oh man! Yeah, that, that, so that's Matt Olson's bestie's baby. Okay, so hey, nice. The the the, the cool muscle. shit was when uh Oink, I, I don't know his name the the pig guy you saw about his ham yeah, wrestler he, ham ham wrestler <laughs> he gave his cape to Gigi's daughter and then the, the teacher dude put a sticker on Gigi's forehead uh, Gigi's daughter's forehead and she kept it on the whole night. I believe she no. was in the car. She <laughs> went home. She had the sticker on her forehead. No, so. she took off the sticker during uh okay. during the show because she was like, my my head's sweaty. <laughs> I had to take it <laughs> off. But where do I put it? I'll put it on the back of your tablet. It's not gonna stick. Do you know that shit is still sticking with one leg like rolled up and stuff like that? <laughs> so it's a four star sticker. <laughs> four point sticker. <laughs> oh shit. Oh man, is K Feb has Toe's exact face without the beard? I mean, it would make sense. They're, uh, it's not yeah, K Feb that they're brothers, okay? This is, yeah. One is Undertaker, the other one's K. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, actually, more, more apt. One of us is Bruno San Martino, and the other one's Pedro Morales. But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what's uh, crazy? When we was growing up, people would literally fight us when we told them that we were brothers. They're like, "There's no fucking way you're brothers." I'm like, yeah, but now that we're both old and fat, now we look. Now we look. Well, like first off, I'm <laughs> fluffy. Okay, <laughs> I'm the yeah. tallest. I'm the tallest New York podcaster in the history of podcasts. It's a fact. After I met Kofi and 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 Kenny and everybody in person, and I've tower over them, and just haven't finished growing yet. I'm the tallest podcaster in New York City. Did you tower them I'm after you totally, stood on the chairs? Is that what yeah, you did? You know what, it, you know what it was? There was a dip that just kept following me. So it looked like uh, I was shorter, but I was just, it was an incline. Is that you know, what I'm totally, it's a dip. Yeah, I'm totally two tall as tags. Matt knows. Yeah, it's a dip. It was a dip. Sounds Ask like a dip Big Cuzzo. Shit. Ask Big Cuzzo. He saw the dip. He saw the dip. Me and Big Cuzzo about the same size. Advantage Age is your favorite teacher and gives you a star when you're a good noodle. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. That's who Can I get it. a thumbs up? Can I get, Can a, I get thumbs a thumbs up? up? Can I have a good time? Can we get a thumbs up? Yeah! Good We're with it! Yeah! Yo, I did not expect Kofi to be so fucking tall, though. My man Kofi hugged me and I, I was wrapped around his knee. <laughs> I, I went up to him and I'm like, my man, the fuck, can you hear me? <laughs> like, I didn't know I needed a lot of it. No! That nigga tall. <laughs> Mad I'm tall. tall. So. I'm still talking shit though. I didn't care. I don't care how tall or how short you are. I'm going to talk shit to you. My no ass is going to talk all the shit to you in the world. Was shot with Savannah. Hey, yo. yo. Kofi was trying to shoot his shot with everybody. When after I took the picture of me and Yim, my man put his arm around me when I was so Mia. How you doing? But well, I'm the I'm the we live baby. And she goes, Oh, okay, I, I know who you are. I'll shout you out. <laughs> my man was going after everybody. But yo, Savannah has some nice eyes though. She mm -hmm. got some like hazel. I was on some, okay, hold up now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, Toe man. Tags is so John Michaels with Sensation Sherry in his prime. Hey, fuck it. You I'm know, I'm just a sexy that. boy. <laughs> you, him? 
Don't do that to Shawn Michaels. Don't you dare hey, do that. To, don't hey. you dare do that to You're my fucking favorite wrestler. You're only making Shawn Michaels look better, Pim. Right. You're only making Shawn Michaels look better, You're making Pim. Shawn Michaels look really <laughs> fucking bad right now. Don't you dare he, do that, Pim. Yo, me and, yo. me and Shawn Michaels have the same hair. It's just mine fell off. Yo, bro, <laughs> you were making Shawn Michaels look like uh, he's in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> But he got paid for that shit, though. I mean... Oh, yeah. <laughs> My man shouted his number. His... Yo! <laughs> I believe it. He did, oh, yeah. Man. I was like, say it again. I don't think she got the, the whole thing. I'm going to be right back. I found something in my mom's grave that's wrestling related, and I was like, oh, shit, I need to put this on the podcast. Let me go get this shit right now. Hold on. All right. Yo, yo, Matt, because it was cool, man. I went up to him and was like, yo, you flung homeboy. And he actually protected me from Gigi's daughter when she was trying to beat the shit out of me the whole night. So I, <laughs> I, I owe him a debt. But yo, my man, yo, they pulled out uh, cucumbers during the battle royal and they started literally sword fighting with the cucumbers and the cucumber broke. And my man's looking at it like, shit. Like, <laughs> I was like, well, I don't know what y'all was trying to accomplish with the cucumbers. As long as it's not being stuck up anybody's nothing, we'd be all right. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he had a plot. The show was like, did he pull out a plot throw? Because he's Dominican. He's like, he pulled out a plot throw. It's like, nah, that's a cucumber show. <laughs> that plot throw wouldn't have survived. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, that was the AO moment with the, the cucumber. That and the ref. The ref was like, yo, what's going on here, bro? What's going on here? But yo, the, the the dude singing his own song, I can't get that vision out of my mind when he put homeboy in that arm lock and then grabbed his arm and pulled his arm to his to his face and started singing into his hand like if his hand was the mic. And my head was like, "This is fucking genius. That's genius right there, man. It's like you don't see shit like that in the in the AEWs." Yo, that's somebody who <laughs> understands his gimmick. Yes, yes. He's skinny, but he was jacked. Like he had, I, I think my I lost count at fourteen, but he had like a fourteen pack. Like my man, <laughs> yo, my man was all I saw was abs and fucking and and veins. The skinny, skinny dude, abs and veins. Stain Michaels, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yo, I don't. My names are horrible. Everybody knows I don't know names for shit. I gotta use your name multiple times a day to understand your names. But yo, it was dope. <laughs> yeah, yo, tell me not, man. Him and that dude with the jagged edge. Yo, he looked Matt. Not for nothing, he looked like somebody we went to school with. But he came out in jagged. He had this old school vibe, like he was, like he was our age, and he's like, I'm not letting go of the fact that you know our music was better back in the day. True, pretty much. And Savannah and uh, Willow Nightingale, but you know why I know those two. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, dude, it was dope because Willow, Willow Nightingale, she wears this, uh, you know, you've seen her before. She has this like singlet thing. Yeah. So she was wrestling the lion guy and she takes off the straps. Like on some credit. So I turn around the show, I was like, oh, she mean business now. Like she gonna fuck homeboy up now. Now she's pissed. <laughs> this is real now. There ain't no show no more. Once you take down them straps, is real. The lion turned around. I was like, "Fuck that!" He put out his straps too. I was like, "Oh, oh, oh! This is this is this is gonna happen." This is just picked up. Huh? Yes, yo and yo, my man did a, a springboard moon salt. He missed. Uh, he missed everyone, but he did a springboard moon. And this is a big dude. And my, I was like, "Yo, these motherfuckers could can move out here." He did a diving attack to both of them on the outside. Yeah, it's amazing what happens when you let wrestlers wrestle. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, I told her about you the night before. She was supposed to joke on you. Why didn't oh. she, man? I guess Willow was supposed to. Jo Willow was supposed to joke on me, Matt. Shit, if I'd have known that, I would have went up to him and be like, "Yo, listen, stop your conversation right now." My man Matt Awesome said that you said that I was cute. <laughs> but shit, stop. I know. I know Brooke Valentine wanted to kick me. Like she gave me the. Like she threatened my life. <laughs> When I wouldn't want to twerk, me and Kenny. Yeah. So, uh, Brooke Valentine definitely made Kenny. Yeah, you see how so, she emphasized the maid. And show. 
to, to work with Riley because Riley, all right, vicious Riley wanted everybody to twerk because you know, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, so she's like, I want them to twerk with us. She's like, let's twerk. She says she wants you guys to twerk. You're twerking. <laughs> and so I was like, oh. Okay. Oh, oh, you didn't see it. She did. The, she looked at me. She's like, "You're gonna twerk." I was like, "Give me a word. Wait a minute." I hid behind show. I was like, "No, no, no, no. Hold up. You supposed to be injured. Time out now." <laughs> I, to get I got a bad back. I, you know, my I, I, my hair is hurt. <laughs> I was like, "Hold up, now nah, I can't be doing this shit." So, uh, really quick intermission, right? On uh, Battle Club Pro and how amazing it is. There are certain things that uh, parents find um, when they're younger children, like me at the time, um, <laughs> find some hidden gems. And since my folks are, are currently literally packing up the whole entire house because they're selling their house in Brooklyn um, to move to Puerto Rico, um, they definitely found some interesting things. And this is one of the most interesting things that my dad has found that's right. A 16 month <laughs> calendar. Wow. From the WWF. All right. F, bitch. That has <laughs> all these wonderful people. Hold on. I keep fighting it up. And and we're, we're going to go through the months really quickly. Okay. Because this, my dear, is from, that's right. Look at that year. 2001. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I'm that old. <laughs> so fuck yourself. All right. Don't make me that sweetheart. Um, <laughs> I really that, that was just, aggressive. Like, I'm that old. I'm that old. Well, look. So now you know why she fits in the do you see? Head. Do you see from what generation? Do you see this era? This is the Good attitude word. era. The attitude. So I have to give you attitude. <laughs> Look at Stone Cold. Oh, that's Triple H. That's The Rock. Fuck Stone Cold. Surprised <laughs> you didn't tell everybody to suck it. <laughs> she will. You want to know what's funny? I actually used that earlier today. Like, and all these people can just mm, just see us mm, with a big S. The whole thing capitalized. But you've only been a fan for four years, right? I've only been a fan. Well, apparently, to uh, Pro Wrestling's podcast's fucking Instagram feed, I'm fucking stupid, and I don't know the fucking thing, and I don't know what I'm talking about. Hey, guy, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Yo, when you come for the queen, you better not miss. Words. <laughs> I just oh, noticed in that picture his chest is over his chest is already starting to get fucked up if you look at that picture. Yeah. I make sure that the glare is not there and whatnot, but we still got lighting. Yeah, no. It was absolutely insane. Um wow. I'm really this old. Yeah. All right. February. Yeah, no, he looks like a baby. Right. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you Venus. go. With the penis. Hello, ladies. <laughs> choppy, choppy, you pee pee. <laughs> I, would, I can never get that shit up my head. I was hoping Boy. that the rest of the calendar had the rest of him and whatnot, but it just says February. <laughs> disappointing. It's quite disappointing of you. How are you going to give me an attitude error calendar and not give me the. Right, and he's supposed Venus? to be a porn star. Word. <laughs> I thought this was a wrestling podcast, not the tone of the show show. <laughs> hey, we do everything here. <laughs> Road dog, Jesse James. That's right. Down where? Yeah. That's right, folks. Oh, you didn't know? No. Man, 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 man. Man. Your ass Your better, ass call. better call somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, yo, look at how young these guys look. Now, yeah, that's 22 years one, ago. The 21 years ago. Well, 21 years ago. Yes, sir. Sir. Yo, that calendar is old enough to drink right now. 
I facts. <laughs> and, yo, and you know what's hilarious is the fact that I have things written down on this calendar, like people's birthdays, no school, uh, WWF pay per view on April Fool's Day. Um, I had a trip. Apparently, my knee, my mom had a knee operation during this year <laughs> as well. I started laughing because I was like, "When the fuck did you use my calendar for your doctor's appointment?" I don't understand. I was the only calendar at the moment. I was like, "No, it wasn't." <laughs> <laughs> we had like them kitty calendars, them church calendars, calendars from the bodega. You had calendars, all right? You know what the those calendars calendar. are. Yeah. The fucking white people, this is a home on a lake calendar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Bob Ross yeah. paintings. <laughs> My favorite was the, the calendar from the Chinese restaurant that I give you the zodiac sign. <laughs> In April, we got the ninth wonder of the world, China. Look at that. Look at Damn. that. Yeah. Ahead of her time. Yeah. You can't go to sleep. Okay. Give me a moment. Okay. Thank you. Maybe change the video. Do something. <laughs> Do okay. 50 jumping jacks. Let's go over there. <laughs> Three Hail Marys. <laughs> I got some in the cup, but. I'll finish the one in the cup in a second. Um, I know. <laughs> I hear you. That's nice reserved. Wonder. Ninth wonder of the world, and I believe this China China was going up against Road Dog in the background over here. It's got to be around right. her in the Continental Championship run, right? Yeah, I'm guessing it is, but it also looks like when she didn't have her boobs up. But I could yeah. be wrong. It just I don't know. She looks a little bit more masculine there than what she does in her actual photos. Also, her eyes kind of look like. They're too far apart. You know what I mean? Like one eyeball looks way far out, and then the other one, she not like a lazy eye, but uh, no, I, I, think, I think it's just the shadowing. The shadowing maybe. is hiding the white part of her eye. That's maybe, maybe that's what it is. All right, let's see. <clears throat> May. <laughs> I am the bird of doom. We went from this, ladies and gentlemen. We went from this. To being in Vince McMahon's seat. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We went from this Triple H. Yo, he got the same tights. <laughs> the only thing that changed do... was the only thing that changed was his facial hair, was his hair and his music. Everything else looked the same. Yeah, but all he had to do to get to Vince McMahon's seat was bang his daughter. And no, and plant some girls. You know, the the if it wasn't for all that controversy. <laughs> now this next one is gonna be a Tuesday. Yo, I can't wait for the Beyond the Ring or the Dark Side of the Ring to come out for the Visit Man scandals. Shit. <clears throat> That's gonna be some crazy shit. We need one for these boys. Danny, 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 Danny. Look how young are parties, how all these ones are coming. Look at this shit. Look at Damn, this. Right when he started his cocaine addiction. Yeah. <laughs> that's the only known picture of Jeff that's not on drugs. Damn. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it switching hands and holding this. It just doesn't work for me. You you know what you know what's even what's even funnier than well not, Jeff's problem is not really funny but the only thing worse than that is Matt has never been relevant. No. Yeah. yeah. Look, you I got mean, you got angry Matt right here. Oh damn it, the angry Matt over here. Okay, and then we have. This you got Lori. You're showing us. His, you're showing us his crotch. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right, I'm, trying to, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to. 
Oh. <laughs> I'm like, we got Matt and then we got Jeff Stick. Look, they're a perfect team. <laughs> <laughs> this is for the month of June, folks. Yeah, it's for, you see there. what happens when you see what happens when you don't give a uh, fucking Val Venus's full picture. She takes advantage of the only full picture that's there. All Listen. Left Listen, you think you know me, and you might if you see this guy. Oh, this wow. is Lay's favorite guy. Yes, that's Lay's right. favorite cat. It looks like Ed made the face like. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that this. was when he was in the brood for three minutes. <laughs> the five second pose, Rikishi glasses. Yeah, he still had oh, no pecs. None. None. That was before the DDP yoga. None. And then what do we have in the background? He speared somebody. Or it looks like he speared somebody. I can't tell what's going on over here. I know he's cheesing over here. Which is really weird. So I want to have you guys look at this because it looks like his eyeball is in the hole. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so you think you know me, but then one eyeball, and, and it's just kind of creepy. Um. So yeah, that's that's for July. We're almost done, folks. <laughs> this nigga. Like oh, man. Starting for part two. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> this man has turned and cried so many times for us. Well, it is the big show. <laughs> and that had to have been like almost the best shape of his life. My man still had hair. Look at yeah. this full set of hair. Look at that. Look at that brooding face. The big show for August. Telling you, this is great. I fucking love this. I'm leaving in my oh. youth right now. All right. Fun now fact about know. the big show. Uh, uh -huh. Fun fact about the big show. He's the only person to hold the WWE, the WCW, and the ECW world title. Nice. Oh, shit. Now, if you can win the AEW title, the, psh, there you go. But I don't see that happening. Um. <laughs> If he, Captain if he Insano. Left. Word. Yeah. It is Captain Insano. <laughs> if you don't know that reference, Google it, bitch. We're not yeah. going to teach you. All right? Yeah, Captain grow up. Insano. Yeah. Oh, old, man. Old movie time. Well, it's the <laughs> Paul White. All right. And then October. If you don't know what the Attitude Error was about in October, may you rest in peace. That's right. The Undertaker, the Ministry Undertaker, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yo, am I bugging or did his, his tattoos darker? Because I don't remember his, his tattoos. His tattoos are a lot dark. darker. They, I think they, he they also the got these shot, tattoos. Yeah. yeah, either they amped it up, or definitely for sure. But that's for sure. Um, But I also believe it's because during this time, he probably got this fresh ink because he didn't have a lot of fresh ink when he first came out. You know? yeah. No, that's right. If you look so, at the little pictures in the background, he doesn't have uh, either. He yeah, doesn't yeah. have it on the bottom one, or you can't see it too much. No, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. I don't ever remember Undertaker's tattoos being that dark. No, never. But then at the same <laughs> time, they weren't really kind of showcased at it. As in, where's the Sarah tattoo? Man, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he got that shit in the Pretty worst Sarah. Spot. Word. Word. Not, and for now, what? It says for, for now, now it has like a decoration over it. Yeah, he put a cloud and some shit. Of course. Oh, shit. And just in case you didn't know, just like To and KFab over here, the Brothers of Destruction. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. For November. No, for November. No, Let's be thankful for family. <laughs> <laughs> what a better way to celebrate All Saints Day, huh? <laughs> right? <Thanks. Shit. laughs> How are you gonna put him on the on the month that has the food and he got no opening in his mouth? <laughs> My name is Kane. He gonna burn out the Benny. Take the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> for real. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, oh, shit. Shit. 
That's for every November. Time to to Kane. Every time they go to restaurants, like Kane, how do you like your burger? I like it, burn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, we're down to the last month. That's right, December. Any anybody? Anybody? You guys want to go ahead and uh, give? Uh, it's got to be Stone Cold. Of- we haven't seen Stone Cold yet. Oh, The Rock. Yeah, that's true. Shit. Wait, it got. Well, I would say Mick Foley maybe, because if he's 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 he loves Santa Claus. But remember, during this era, we weren't about Santa Claus. We're all about being a stone cold <laughs> bad motherfucker. That's right, stone cold <laughs> for the month of December, because in December it does get. Stone cold. <laughs> Especially back in those days. Remember when it used to snow in, yeah. in the winter? <laughs> and that's the bottom line. Because New York City weather said so. <laughs> <laughs> but there you go. Nope. Stunning taker. Is that taker? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And there we Man, go. Those, Stone cold. That was Austin. back in the day when it actually snowed during the winter time. And what's amazing yeah, is that cool. they did promote the rock on here. But now one month had The Rock on there. Word. And, and it's sad because it's crazy. It's because... Didn't you say there was 16 one, two, months? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, yeah, that is a 16 well, month. Yeah, time. no, that, that is. Because, you know, the first the first one, this is this oh, is your first 16 months. The bullshit. <laughs> this is the bullshit. The other four. There's not even a picture here for me to be like, hey, whatever. No. There's no rock. You have Jericho, Val, Val Venus made it to the calendar before the rock. I want Word. you to think about that, folks. Okay. Val Venus. You're sick people. No dog. Okay. Well, China. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but why and wouldn't you put Billy Gunn on February? You know, the ass man, he got the hearts and the, and the kisses and all that stuff. Yeah. As the Rock once put it, who gives a shit about Billy Gunn? <laughs> he word. Although he Billy destroyed Gunn is Billy Gunn. Better now than what Waldo was doing, and then you yeah. have yeah. Triple H. No, no, Shawn Michaels, but Shawn Michaels wasn't really there. I think this was afterwards. This was definitely case- <laughs> after uh, the original DX. Yeah, yeah. just to, but- just to keep Lay Spirit alive, we got to mention the Rock killed Billy Gunn on Sunday Night Heat. Yeah. <laughs> That's no, how you know it's bad. They have him on here. Where is it? This would have been the rock right here. That would have yeah. been his month. Like know, so- one month. What month should we have him in? I was ready. I, and you know what's so funny is that I was ready to see it. Because you know when you get yeah. calendars, you're gonna be like, let's see everybody. Oh, this is cool. And I'm like, well, where the fuck is the rock? They're promoting him here. They're not promoting him in my pages. What happened? What happened? Unless there's a separate calendar where he's December and Austin's not in there. Maybe. Maybe. That's but then good... that'd be stupid. Like, why would I get multiple? Well, no. Why would I get multiple you calendars? Know why? It's not like because I travel with this one. Think about this. Think <laughs> about this. Because you have those who have the East Coast calendars, and then you have those who have the West Coast calendars. And at that point in time, East Coast and West Coast always had something similar, but it was always something different. So I want to say that I'm underneath the impressions that maybe a different, like the West Coast or even the, in the Midwest, they have something different than what we have here on the East Coast. Yeah, makes sense. So if that's the only thing that I can possibly think of now. Before, back in the day in 2001, I was just pissed. Um, but these are, this is one of my little gems. That I have, and um, apparently I also have a couple of shoe boxes of um, just pictures of Valvinus. <laughs> of po- yes, actually Valvinus, Shawn Michaels, definitely Shawn Michaels. <laughs> um, where I have posters, posters from back in the day from their WWE magazine, and I did I tell you I have like a shoe box full of it. That shit was heavy as fuck for me to carry today, and I made sure to get all of them. So, um, gentlemen, I shall be right back. I know we got 20 minutes left for the show, but I have mom duties that I must do that my child is just 
not feeling it right now. She's just like looking at me all cute with her Sasha Banks shirt and her moño with her sleeping mask ready. Come here, child. Come here. <laughs> okay. Just come here. Just come here. Okay. She's just ready. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's ready. ready. She's ready. <laughs> yes, I must. I, I, oh, don't walk into the door here. I don't want to go to the hospital. Child abuse. Child Yo, pro. <laughs> we had red heart shirts. Remember that shit Yo, back in the day? I got called out of class because right. my red heart shirt said Hitman on the back. And it gave all the dates of his title wins. And the teacher called me out of class because she thought I was promoting myself as a fucking Hitman. I was like, do you not see the front of this shit with wrestling? It looked exactly She's a like fucking you. idiot. Yeah, she is a fucking idiot. <laughs> shit, man. Yo, you gotta keep your shirts, man. Yeah, you could probably sell that shirt. Well, it, it's not like it's, that shirt's gonna be hundreds of dollars. Dude, I, but I'm not saying about I don't keep any of my old shit. No, I was talking about uh Pro. He has the oh. fear the fear the monster shirt from Kane. 2005 but yo there's a market like you go to the, i don't know they thrift stores or something but there's a market for old shirts oh, like that shit. yeah on my old shit.com <laughs> yeah you know it's because no one has any style nowadays so everybody wants the old shit yo while we have a little bit of time we didn't get to touch on any of the anything like nxt and shit but did you know that worlds collide is also on that Sunday where all out is on. Yes, it's it's um in the afternoon. Yeah. You know, you know what's crazy? That whole weekend is booked because Clash of the Castle, if you guys don't know this, is at one o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, uh, because it's England time. Yeah, it's at one o'clock in the afternoon, it. and then there's a UFC event that starts at like three or four. And then that Sunday is the, the worlds collide and then all out. So there's plenty of fucking wrestling and MMA to watch. Yeah, it's going to be packed. <laughs> Damn, the one-eyed monster. Yeah, that was when promos were raw back in those days. Yo, but what what led them to, to unify the NXT titles with Braun Breaker and Tyler Rex? So, uh, Tyler Bateman. Tyler Bateman. What Tyler so Rex? Jesus, you remember him? <laughs> You remember Tyler Rex? Jesus. Yo, look him, look her up now. No, yeah, 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 I yeah, gotta yeah, say. yeah. But uh, no, so they're closing down NXT UK and making NXT Europe. And I think they're taking the best assets from UK and bringing them in to NXT. So now we have uh, Tyler Bates going to unify that. Uh, Mandy Rose is taking on... Uh, shit, I, I had her name here. Yeah, the the UK champion and another person. Yeah, but she's... Uh, there you go. I mean, one second, let me look up this name, because I got a... I'm bad at names as well. We've start, got to start giving props here. So she's taking on... Miko Satamora, who is... She is a badass from... Uh, over in Japan, she was in the the May Young Classic. If anybody ever saw that, she's legit. So she's taking on Manny Rose, and there's another one, Blair Davenport, who was also in UK, who's also a pretty good wrestler. She did. She actually debuted uh, yesterday or this past NXT. So that also should be a pretty fun match. I think the tag champions are gonna emerge at some point. Yeah, that, that's what it is. They're closing it down and starting up something new. What's up, ninety nine problems? What you said? Who me? What's up? It's been some time. Yeah, no, uh, I got ninety nine problems and your mom ain't one. Yeah, man, it's been a while, bro. You all right? How's everything doing with you, bro? How's everything? Wait, hold up. Blair Davenport is Will Ospreay's girl. Oh shit! So she be flipping too? No, like Will she Ospreay. She's um. How do I explain? You remember the you remember the girl who was with um. 
that the fucking pirate dude. Yes. Where they were like they were weird brother and sister shit. She's kind of like her. No matter of fact, no. Let's bring it back. If you watch her, she's like Paige. Okay. Okay, I can see that. I get a Victoria vibe. Yeah, but from the picture, yeah. But if you watch her live, you you can be like, okay, if if there ever needed to be, you know how we said like uh like Dolph Ziggler is like the next Mr. Perfect. Yes. She's like the next Paige. You, you you know what's funny? Looking at this picture, this looks like New Japan Pro Wrestling. Um, Andy, Andy Circuit. Andy AEW, and then look at WWE. Like if Mandy Rose doesn't scream WWE at you, looking at this picture, you don't know rest. Yeah. You don't know rest. Now, am I? I would have Sadamire uh, win. I gotta figure. I gotta learn how to pronounce names as well. Sadamora, yeah, Sadamora, Miko, Miko Sadamora, yeah. So, for anybody who doesn't know, a former military, I only ever had to say "ma'am" or "sir." That's why I don't know shit for names because I never had to use them. No, I hear you. Even even if I didn't say "ma'am" or "sir," it was, you know, it three, it one, chief. <laughs> but yeah, no, she's. I would have her win. To legitimize everything, but I think Mandy Rose is gonna win because she's on this unbelievable fucking run. Yeah, three hundred and something days as champ. Yeah, and you know I, I think her. I think Toxic Attraction is got to be one of the biggest things coming out of the NXT 2.0. Yeah, Bron- yo, Braun ain't hitting the way they think he is because yeah. he hasn't been on the show for a while, and I haven't noticed. <laughs> Word. Uh, yeah, everything's been good, bro. Just been going to night school and working, you know, both to take it. Yo, I hear that, brother. I hear that, brother. Keep it up, man. Do your thing, bro. Good luck with school. All that other shit. Keep that shit up, man. I know, I know it takes a toll. Working, it almost feel like you're doing 24-7. You ain't got no time. I feel you, bro. We this is why these shits be recorded and stays on YouTube. If you you can watch us anytime, you ain't gotta be here live. We appreciate you being here live, but you handle your business, man. It, that comes first. But that's appreciate you stopping by too, also, man. Good luck with school and all that stuff, man. I remember back in my day, school was supposed to be important. I don't know anymore. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hmm. But shit, um, yeah, and then. They're the Clash of the Castle. Do you think Roman's dropping the titles? Hell no, not a, not at that show. What I think hap- what I think is going to happen is we're going to have some shenanigans, and Karrion Cross is going to screw over Drew McIntyre, leading to a program with that, and then maybe I would like to see Karrion Cross take the belt from uh, what do you call it? From Roman, but that's just me. I'm a fan of Karrion Cross from before he joined, you know, WWE and NXT yeah. and all that shit. But that that's just the fanboy in me. I, you know, they had to bring him back for a reason. They can't just bring him back to do the same old shit. No, I hear you. That statement that he made when he beat up uh, Drew McIntyre and then Scarlett put the the hourglass on the ring that was a strong statement. Yeah. You can't just walk away from that statement. Something has to happen. Yeah, and I think, I honestly think, again, we I mentioned it with AEW. We we need new stars. Drew McIntyre yeah. is nice and all, but if you make Karrion Cross, if you book him correctly, and give him the title, you have a new person now. Who's somebody fresh? Who's somebody new? He's already got a good doomsday clock gimmick. He doesn't have to say shit. Charlotte could just or uh, Scarlett could just show up, put the clock down. There's, there's more shit you can do with him. No, yeah, it's true. Because think about it. I would all I've always said I would like to see one day where there's a champ who doesn't wait to see what challengers come. The champ is like, nah, nah, I don't have the target. You guys have the target. And he's just walking up like, you're the one I'm going after now. Yeah. 
and, and that'd cost be cool. could be there. Yeah. Like I said, that would be the one thing I think that they should do with like the 24 seven title is instead of having Dana or whoever holds it always running, have her attack somebody and keep it just so just to throw somebody just to throw them off and be like, oh, shit, they can attack us, too. Yeah, no, it just seems like it's a one way thing when you have that title. Yeah. No, it's true though, because even when Drew McIntyre was champion, who wants to challenge me now? I'll give an open challenge. Why wouldn't you just call people out? Yeah, like I, like I don't know. You, you know who you want to wrestle. You know who you want to wrestle. Stop pretending that you know they're gonna come up. Just be on some ricochet. Get your ass out here. Yo, <laughs> you know what I'm think, saying? Yo, think about how cool it been when Jericho had the list. Yeah. If a champ, if a heel champ comes out with the title and it's like, yo. You guys don't see what's going on back there. I got my list of people who talk all this shit. I'm going to take them out one at a time. Yeah. Who's next on the list? That would be an awesome fucking concept. It would be. Because then that will also lead to one one and done. (laughs) Yeah, that's what the guy said. (laughs) Tick tock. (laughs) Fuck you. (laughs) (laughs) I saw that and I just started cracking. <laughs> TikTok. TikTok. You have TikTok? TikTok for you. <laughs> it sounds official. It sounds official. It sounds official. Oh, yeah. man. That's pretty, um, it's funny how my man doesn't understand the words no. Listen, we're, we're done giving him this 15 minutes of faith. <laughs> well, um, AEW. Oh, we had a lot of AEW news to kind of cover. Um, yes, AEW yes, yes. used to be uh, was able to homegrown their talent, and then all of a sudden, people got released, and Tony Khan was like, "I want new toys." And with that being said, um, a lot of AEW of what it used to be is not what it is now, and that's kind of sad. Because you, you know, we fell in love with AEW for the pro wrestling aspect of it that is different. But now if you're giving me the same shit that Vince McMahon was giving me before, then you're not really giving me any new shit. At this mm-hmm. point, what's the point of Rampage? Oh, my God. Real Rampage is... I'd rather watch Dark. And I know that who's yeah. going to win over Dark because of the jobbers and stuff like that. But I, I, I listen for the commentary. And I watched for the commentary. Now, there were a lot of things that popped off yesterday um, prior to AEW's Dynamite. Mm. Damn, that was so good. I found (laughs) Dewar's too, by the way. If anybody knows about Dewar's whiskey, y'all fucking know the deal. Um, (laughs) So some things uh, was addressed. Uh, Fightful Select has learned that there's a mandatory talent meeting today with all Elite Wrestling Dynamite tapings. We're told Tony Khan will be present, but not many details are known beyond that. The talent is basically has learned um, da, 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 da. they were told the meeting took place between 3 and 4 p.m. and that Tony Khan was fired up for it. Several topics were tackled, including working as a team, the lines of communication, and who the talent can talk to if they have concerns. The access to Tony Khan was also addressed as the rumors of miscommunication and lack of access to him has emerged. Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks were said to have made it clear that their door is always open and that they can be reached for concerns as well. Talents were briefed via email recently about several of the new coaches and talent relations promotions. In addition, uh, we've learned that Chris Jericho and Tony Schiavone spoke at the meeting. Schiavone has been tasked with some additional talent relation roles. We've also heard that the contract tampering um, and inquiry rumors were addressed. And it was noted that AEW's chief legal officer sent a message slash email to WWE Uh, specifically to Nick Khan and Stephanie McMahon about contract tampering allegations. So that was the mandatory meeting 
that took place yesterday before dynamite. Um, oh God, I just I, I just looked at this name and it just, <sighs> ladies and gentlemen, if you are so mad and and got your panties crunched up in your crotch and 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 as a fucking butt plug that has never been up your ass before um <laughs> and you're whining and bitching about it um the person who created the idea to move moxley and cm punks from all out to dynamite yesterday was indeed moxley's idea it was his favor of the move and one source even indicated that it was his idea and pitch and all elite wrestling went with it so you're mad that of your three minute squash match with a CM Punk. One, he shouldn't have come back that early. Two, stop being mad. He was not always gonna be your champion. This man is not really gonna be lasting long in the wrestling industry. Um, it, eventually CM Punk also agreed to the match, um, and Frightful has not learned if it was connected to any of the reporting issues with CM Punk last week. Um, it was to add, it's basically, it, as I'm reading onto it, it's noted that in the air he heard it was an idea to play a few days to increase ticket sales and add buzz to the Cleveland AEW show. Uh, Fightful has reached out to AEW officials who did not respond to an asked for commentary on this story. Uh, we've not been told of creative plans heading out of this match. Uh, Fightful Select was told last week that the decision was not the original plan and that multiple plans for AEW All Out had changed. So, a lot of things have changed. It seems and like that. And I've read somewhere, somebody was commenting. I don't know what the fuck his name was. Um, but he was on here saying that supuestamente there was rumors that John Cena was going to be in yeah, AEW bro. All Out to challenge John Moxley. If you honestly believe that John Cena, out of all people in wrestling is going to AEW to challenge John Moxley for the AEW title. You are dumb as fuck. Oh, hold on. Gigi, you don't know John Cena is the third man? He's the third man. This is this is where he turns heel and becomes Hollywood Cena and revives <laughs> yeah. his career now. We're not doing this. We're not we're not doing this. We're not, he's not Hogan. He's not Hogan. Although he did probably get some hair extensions to cover that bald spot that we all know he was balding for yep. a hot minute. All right. Yep. Looking like JBL in the he back. Got some keeps. My <laughs> man. My man was looking kind of rough. All right. Yeah. Not Leo 99. rough, but rough. 99 problems saying that um, he wants to say something before he goes. He doesn't see. He thinks that. Um, Austin Theory will be a flop with the money in the bank. He doesn't see him winning either title since he's been since he won that briefcase. He's been. I've been joke. saying that. Yeah. I've been saying that. I agree with you. Ninety nine problems, but Jamana ain't one. I agree with you. I don't believe that Austin Theory's cash in is going to be a successful one. He is going to land in the category that le that is non successful. Why? Because we must balance the scales of how many uh, successful briefcases that were, you know, cashed in and how many that failed. We're getting too high up here. So we need to yeah. the scales a bit. All right. At the end of the day, Austin Theory is still going to be a mega superstar. Yep. All right. He has the look. He has the mic skills. His wrestling skills are not bad. If you put him in right there with the right person, the chemistry is going to be great. Remember, he was indeed under the wing of Johnny Gargano. And oh, 
can we just say Johnny Wrestling is back? Yo. Johnny <laughs> fucking Wrestling is back. I'm going to be excited when I see that together. they can treat him correctly. It looks like they're going to treat him correctly. I know this. they're going to treat him correctly because Triple H is going to treat him correctly. Triple H is going to be like, he's here for the little guys. I want to say real quick, there is a way that they can have Awesome Theory cash the in. Right? <laughs> the, yeah. way. the way. So they can have Awesome Theory be almost talked into cashing in. Whether it's Johnny Gargano or whether it's his ego or something. Talk him into cashing in without jumping somebody. I'm like, yo, I'm cashing in tonight. You're gonna face me one on one. And then in that within that match, you he doesn't win it, but you give him the star making turn that even in a loss coming out of it, you're like, all right, that dude can be the next guy somewhere to take the yeah. sting out of losing it to make it not so nonchalant and meaningless. You know who's going to make theory lose. His title shot, Dexter Loomis. Mm -hmm. I can, I can. You want to know why? Because Austin Theory started acting like a douchebag to Johnny Gargano. Dexter Loomis is trying to bring uh, Indy Hartwell from NXT. We're going to bring her to the main roster. What would be the way might be without Austin Theory. And because Austin Theory is too fucking, his head blew the fuck up, here you're going to have Dexter Loomis choking him out of all that air like he did with The Miz, all right? And like, nah, you can't do that. You can't do that to Daddy Organo. You can't do that. And then I have a, a I have a theory, haha, -ha, right? <laughs> that Indy Hartwell is going to be in an all block type of thing because she's seen Dexter do it. So you know, twiddle dee, twiddle dum, with whatever you can do, I can do better. And they're gonna be like Indy Hartwell, what? No. And then she's gonna help Dexter Loomis get theory and make him lose the tactic. I'm putting it I mean, all that, together. Yeah, it all that's together. a good theory. <laughs> that's one way hey. to do it. <laughs> that, I don't know if I'm um, too excited at that. No. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a lot. Um, yeah. But well, I think the reason why him losing makes sense is because him winning the title seemed like it was a last-minute decision. Like, they forced him in the match. You know, it it seemed like a waste when he won it. Because we all knew he was winning the minute he came out. Mm -hmm. So oh, we all felt like only, he was gonna win it. Yeah. Now with yeah. Triple H in charge, he's gonna be like, "Yeah, we're gonna scrap that. We're gonna scrap that right now." Um, yeah. Now, back to AEW nonsense and moves and stuff like that. What happened with Sammy Guevara and Eddie Kingston? Apparently, Sammy said some shit Kingston didn't like, and he smacked him. Or he right. went to smack him. Like. So, in an update, Fightful Select has learned. I get all my news from Fightful, so thank you so much for providing me this amazing content. Um, in an update, we've learned uh, much more about the situation between Eddie Kingston and Sammy Guevara. We're told that Eddie Kingston was mad because Sammy Guevara hasn't spoken with Eddie or cleared the content of a promo that ended up being edited off a show. The two have not conversed since the Blood and Guts show where Kingston threw Sammy Guevara off the cage. We've heard that Kingston has asked to work with Sammy, who didn't have people exactly aligning to work with him after his feud with Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page. Those who those that we spoke to said that there were some pretty clear uh, parameters set on Sammy Guevara's feud and promos to not mention his ex fiance which we're told has never come up or been pitched anyway. So for those who don't know Sammy Guevara's ex, we're talking about Pam, the woman that he originally went ahead and proposed to in the middle of an AEW ring during Dynamite, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes. All right, and that 
engagement yeah. didn't even last a whole year before they called it quits. And now Sammy Guevara married Ty Conti. I digress. Um, I mean, Ty is hotter. I'm so sorry, but. <laughs> I mean, you see that booty. It's a Brazilian booty. And Word. she's Brazilian, so she probably takes it up the butt without, <laughs> without problem. And Sammy's like, fuck it, I'm in. Literally, I'm in. Um, I'm just come back. Word. What the fuck? <laughs> I think Ty takes it up the butt. And Pam wasn't giving up the booty hole. So. Oh, that's relevant. <laughs> Ty Conti giving up the booty hole solidifies a better connection and a relationship because it's booty hole sex. You know what? Um, <laughs> I know we don't know each other too. I'm a, I'm a little bit of a puritan. He saw a Brazilian booty hole and he went for it. <laughs> Fuck what you heard. Um, the original plan was for Eddie Kingston to win at the All Out match. In the edited out promo, Sammy Guevara refer, uh, referred to Kingston <laughs> as a fat piece of shit, which Kingston took exceptional as, oh man, as Kingston took it basically to heart and felt it was buried in the match if a fat piece of shit beat him. The cruise of the frustration, however, um, was how Sammy Guevara followed up with this after being perceived as difficult working with Scorpio Sky, Ethan Page, and Sonja Dutt in the months prior. So I guess, Sanjia, Sanjia thank you. Um, after that, we're told that Kingston has yelled at Sammy Guevara, who smiled at him. Kingston responded by pie-facing Guevara. Uh, Sammy ended up being incredibly unhappy with this, and Kingston was suspended for two weeks. We were able to reach out to Eddie Kingston, who wouldn't confirm the recounting of events, but said, I was wrong. That is all. So Eddie Kingston's being a bigger man about certain things. And he's basically saying that he was the wrong person. He was in the wrong. And that's it. So it sounds like Eddie Kingston crossed the line, and he saw that him crossing the line. So in reaching out to Guevara's take on the matter, he felt that there was uh, communication issues in Kingston, nor any coaches of or Tony Khan said that his line was off limits. He said that anyone who shames the way Eddie looks are likely the same kind of people that say he's too small and was playing off that section that criticism is based on that as opposed to his own personal beliefs. It was said that if were communicated to him, not to comment on that. So essentially, um, there was a big rumor that Eddie uh, that Eddie Kingston was basically being body shamed because Sammy Kavara didn't want to work with a fat person. He's too fat. He's out of shape. And the original rumor was that Eddie swung at him. Right, that's what we first listened and learned, and everything like that. And now, as more things unfold, it just sounds like this was more on Eddie's side because Eddie was the one that set it off with a promo that possibly had to deal with his ex girl, Pam. Um, Sammy basically said the following when FIFO reached out for comments. Uh, Sammy basically said, as a professional, you're communicated, uh, you're, you communicate things that you don't want to be said, like other people's I've been in programs with and have worked with, Matt Hardy, Jericho, and others. And I did communicate of what I didn't want to be said in this angle, and Eddie did it. But Eddie did not do the same, and Eddie did not mention to me or the coaches or Tony Khan or anyone in AEW what he didn't want it to be said. So after Ty and my match with Sky Blue and Dante, I cut a promo on Eddie, insulting Eddie and the fans as a heel, which I know the thing everyone loves to do is hate me and Ty, so I'm the perfect person to play this asshole character for Eddie to ultimately beat at all out. I see what people say online about Eddie and his appearance, 
which anyone who legitimately shames Eddie for how he looks can go to hell. It's the same people who shame me for being too small. So Sammy Guevara, the character, I could be the physical person playing that person that Eddie can shut up at all out. But Eddie did not do the professional thing and communicated to me, which if he did, I would never have said it because the last thing I wanted to do is hurt someone for real. So after the promo, I get to the back and Eddie's flipping out yelling, you can't call me fat over and over. And as I'm trying to walk down the stairs in Gorilla making a big scene, uh, people was getting in between us. Eddie tries to pie face me and he more than touches my face. It was weird. And everyone backs everyone up here it was unfortunate because the promo was on a tape show and easily could have been edited which they end up doing anyways um i know this isn't eddie's first time being aggressive and getting out of control backstage i know he has he had i'm sorry i know he had to do some kind of anger management after this whole thing the whole thing was very unnecessary but it is what it is Live and learn, I guess. On to the next week up. Yeah, that that story encapsulates my problem with Eddie Kingston. You're gonna go out there and talk some shit that you shouldn't have been, but he called you fat, and now you're mad. Like that's some bitch shit. That's not I'm I'm hood from Yonkers or whatever. That's a bitch shit. Yeah, Who gives a shit what he called you. Yeah, you should be used to it, especially if you're from New York. Yeah. Everybody gonna call you that chin. Maybe it, it, it maybe it has to do with his own insecurities and everything like that. And you know, uh, again, mental health is a big fucking thing and a big issue. Oh, yeah. Um, and with Eddie Kingston, it's not a non-known fact that he had a lot of mental issues. Um, where he had to go get himself some help. Um. Wait, did he have mental issues or did he have abuse, like substance issues? Because those are two I, different things. I think. And it's in a his little promos, bit, he keeps talking about his substance. I, I, a lot of it has to do with substance, but I do believe that um, some part of it does definitely have to do with like the mental issue part of it as well. Because if you're addicted to, you know, substance, eventually that's going to fuck with your mentee. Yeah. And when it fucks with your mentee, you end up beating you end up being your own worst enemy, right? And then you you just process it. It's just something that you continuously process. I think that it was a wrong move from Eddie Kingston to absolutely spaz out the way he did. Um, and the fact that he admits it shows that he's a man. He had to calm down and bring that down. But Eddie Kingston is no longer on suspension. He was suspended for two weeks. Whether it was paid or non-paid, I'm underneath the impression that it's non-paid because so far all the suspensions that Tony Khan has delivered has not been paid. So you know? is that match still on for uh, all no, out? No. no, no, it's been done. It's canceled. Okay, they, they, they're that. doing um, Ruby Soho and Ortiz on Rampage versus right. Sammy and uh, Ty. Khan. Ty. Okay. Which nobody wants. Also, what are we doing with Ruby? What are we doing with um Ortiz? Waste you know? of time. You know, so I was a huge fan of Ruby before Same. she went to NXT. And then in NXT and WWE, even I just grew her coming to AEW just showed maybe the WWE was right. Maybe she, maybe she didn't be put in that spot. Maybe she's just somebody who's a good wrestler, but not a top level wrestler. I, I, hate to say it. I don't believe that. I believe that Ruby Soho, first and foremost, Ruby Soho is a better wrestler than Jade. Oh, yes. so anybody's a better wrestler than Jade. Yes, I agree with that. No, but yeah. if, if you're going to give a title to somebody, I would rather have her as my TBS women's champion, Ruby Soho over Jade. Yes. 
Well, Jade has indeed improved tremendously, but Sis was legit handed a fucking title. And I don't think yeah. she should have been handed a title. I think Chris Satlander should be the one to take Jade off her pedestal. I don't think Athena should be the one either. No. I, I agree with you on that. My only thing is, again, you bring in the ex WWE and hand them shit. Like, you got to start using your own motherfuckers. So, Jade having it, I'm not too upset with. The one thing I think Ruby should have won was that Owen Hart open. Britt Baker yeah. did not yeah. that. Ruby yeah. Soho should have won that. Agreed. Yeah. Something. But that was, she hasn't that won was, shit. That was so in the bank, too, for fucking Britt Baker and Adam Cole. Yeah. Like, that was just too well written for their favor, and it shouldn't have been that way. And you know what? Oh, there's also news. Speaking of Britt Baker, there's legitimate beef between Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa. Yeah, yeah we talked about that earlier. So, so Thunder Rosa is not hurt? No, she's legit hurt. That's okay. legit. That's not a work. Thunder Rosa is legitimately hurt. Okay. Um. I'm trying to figure out exactly what's the injury per se, because I don't, I don't, I don't remember. Uh, from what I, it. from what I understand, is she has um problems with disc in her back. The right, there was a disc. Yeah. Uh, there was a disc that was like messed up on her neck or something like that, right? Or on her yeah. back? You said? Yeah. On her back. I think it, I think it was a back, but yeah, she's like been dealing with this for months now or weeks or some shit like that. And right. I guess it was time for her to get that shit fixed. Yeah, so uh, word emerged shortly before Dynamite that Thunder Rosa was injured and wouldn't be competing at All Out. Fightful Select has gained word that the original plan was for Tony Storm to emerge victorious and win the AEW's women's title. Now she'll compete for the interim AEW's title against uh, her, uh, Hikaru Shida. Yeah. Uh-huh. Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, and Jamie Hayter. We've not learned a creative plan set for the title since. We have talent contact both sides of things regarding Rosa, with many saying that she worked hard to keep others' young women's talents booked and others that perceived her as developing an ego and being difficult to work with. Those that we've talked to who worked with her at Mission Pro Wrestling had had positive things to say about her leadership when she's around. Um, but rumor has it that Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker absolutely hate each other, that despise each other, that Jamie Hayter does not like working with Thunder Rosa, and that Thunder Rosa broke her nose in fear of Jamie Hayter coming into the ring to destroy her. Wait, she broke. So Thunder Rosa broke Hater's nose. Yeah, Thunder Rosa uh, legit, and I think it was either Dynamite or Rampage, uh, broke Jamie Hater's nose in a match. And on purpose. So that's the thing. I don't know if it was on purpose, or if it was one of those things like a freak accident. But there's tension. Between Thunder Rosa, Dr. Britt Baker, Jamie Hayter, obviously whoever follows Britt Baker, that Thunder Rosa is difficult to work with and that Thunder Rosa fears that they are going to legitimately hurt her in the middle of the ring. They feel that they're, uh, Thunder Rosa feels like she's going to get sexy starred on her. And if you don't know who sexy okay. star is, Please look it up because there's a lot yeah. of people who don't know about Sexy Star. Sexy Star used to work for a lot of promotions, um, but decided to uh, be break ruthless the in the ring. And she actually yeah. dislocated the arm. She didn't break okay. it. Yeah. Uh, she just, dis- right, through Rosemary, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Sexy Star had a match with uh, Rosemary. Um, I forgot exactly what promotion, but uh, she definitely dislocated her arm because she felt like 
uh, da uh, I was gonna say Daphne. Oh, God rest her soul. Um, but she felt like Rosemary was going to legitimately hurt her in the ring because of miscommunication. Because she thought that she didn't like her and that she was going to come for her in the ring. That's crazy. So it's been rumored that Thunder Rosa also does more or less the same thing with the competitors that she is with in the ring because she feels like they're coming for her. Like a legit coming for her. Not a, like not storyline, but like legit. And it's like, if you are going to work like this, then why are you here? Yeah. Yeah. Yo, not everybody's not going to like everybody. I get it. But you got to be professional. It, you got somebody's life in your hands. Yeah. Right. You have to be it's professional. You about both it. have to fucking work together. Yeah. Otherwise, it doesn't work. As fake as people say this shit is, it's dangerous. I fucking hate half of the people that I normally work with. Yeah. I really do. But you know what? I put that shit to the side. Because we're not here on a prof uh, we're not here on a personal level. We're here on a professional level. Yep. If I can't work with you in the ring professionally, thinking that you know what? You're gonna have my best interest and catch me when I need to be caught and everything like that. Then what are we both doing in the ring? Yeah. Because we're gonna end up legitimately killing each other for either A not catching one another, uh a, a kick to the face that could possibly break something. Yeah. You know, it's so weird how these these people are like, oh, I don't want to work with her. She's blah blah blah. It's like, yo, first off, you're in you're in a situation that's predetermined. If the if somebody in the back says, Hey, you go out and you take the pin tonight, take the fucking pin. Like, what the fuck could Yeah, you're a team like, putting on a show. This isn't who, this isn't professional boxing or yeah. anything. Who gives a who gives a shit if you don't think you should be losing to this person? This is story. Yeah. If you don't who, if you want to be in a situation where you can dictate if you win or not, go into MMA and f fucking actually yeah. fight somebody. No, yeah. Who's the person that Thunder Rosa defended her title against and everybody was like, yo, Thunder Rosa just fucking, like, didn't sell for her and shit? Sandbag the girl. Yes. Who was that? Um, Who did she sandbag? It wasn't. It was right before Tony Stone. It wasn't Tony. Was it was was it Ruby? No. No, it wasn't. No, Ruby. it wasn't Ruby. Who did she sand back? You know what? I'm gonna look that up. Ru uh, I'm gonna yeah. uh, it might have been up. Hater. It might have been Hater. Um, because that was like right when she won the title. That's when all these. Oh, you're muted. But right when she won the title, that's when I know. all these. No, no, um, no. I know I was muted. I did that. Um, oh, okay. Marina uh, Sheffer. Sheffrey. Yeah. MMA girl. Oh. Oh, yes, yes, Yo. yes, yes. Oh, Shafir. That, Shafir. Yeah, Maria Shafir. That's on a different note. Maria is greener than fucking baby shit. Bro. No, but, but nah, she, she's she, good. she tried to fucking hip toss her and she wasn't going nowhere. Like, there was some stuff that's like, come on, you got to take care of this person. You, you yeah. know, if they're trying to build her up as a certain way, then you got to take care of her. You know, nah. because I saw that. I remember seeing that man. I was like, wow. I thought. And Rosa was supposed to be the best. Like she's, and she was looking not stiff, right? Yeah, yeah she yeah. was looking stiff. Yep. Marina wasn't uh, looking stiff. Dude, she does. She didn't look good in the fucking match before that. I don't no, know. How no, she, she looks good it. in her matches. I just think you gotta find the right person to have that chemistry with. And yeah. I, I think she's good, but. I don't know. Like, it makes you really start questioning. Like, is this all like something that we're just, oh, it's in our heads. Maybe it's just the dirt sheets talking. Maybe it's this. Or is this something that we've been kind of just watching for months and we're just like, yo, but what the fuck is really going on with this shit? Why doesn't this yeah. seem flawless? Why is yeah. the Rosa, my champion, put in tag team matches instead of singular matches? 
Especially after you just finished fighting uh, Serena Deeb and you're talking about you're the best wrestler in the world, then you do this shit. Like, you have this stiff ass match. It's like. I'll Wait take Serena Deeb as my women's champion any day of the fucking week. And she is, yeah. she deserves her flowers. Yeah. yeah. She deserves her fucking flowers. I put, for I real. put her in the same, uh, the same category as Mercedes Martinez. Yes. Like, they should have been champ from way back. And, and what happened to them? Why, why are they not on TV right now? Well, uh, Serena Deeb is-, is actually on AEW Dark. You see, and, you will uh, see her more on AEW Dark. Mercedes is, I think, the Ring of Honor Women's Champ right now. Yeah, but they don't have, do have... They, they don't have a show for Ring of Honor, right? Uh, they yeah. do a lot of indie, like they do a lot of in person live shit. Okay. Which is dope, but at the same time, if it's not televised, like, how can yeah. we enjoy it? We just see her yeah. walking around with a title, and we've seen her before, her work in the ring before, but what has she done to earn the title? And it's because when we don't see it, it's like out of state, out of mind. Yep. It just so happens, like, you just threw people together. Mm-hmm. This is what I was saying earlier, like, when you start bringing in the beef from 20, 30 years ago, and that's the foundation of the, the rivalry, it's like, I don't get to see this, so I just have to take your word for it. Yeah, but see, like I was explaining earlier, you didn't get to see it. Maybe I didn't get to see it or Gigi didn't get to see it. But the vast majority of the people in that audience saw it. They know. And unlike what they do with the, like, the comic book movies, AEW is playing towards the people who know. If you know, yeah. cool. If you don't, catch up. Yeah, but you know, but the one benefit of being of watching AEW since the inception of it is if you're going to do a storyline, do a storyline that's been based on the AEW. Yeah, but basically... You know, I want to be... Like, but 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 I want... Like, imagine they, they bring a storyline and like, yo, three years ago when we first started, you did this. Yo, the the, the, the Starks and, and Hobbs storyline. I love yeah, that. That's that the AEW fucking... That's that's I can I know what's happening because I've seen their yes. relationship happen in AEW. His I love Ricky Starks. Yes. Starks and Hobbs are I love both 100% of them. AEW grown, they're homegrown, and they don't work for other promotions. So the story you have to tell is there. AEW, and as much as people might get mad at me for saying it, stop letting your motherfuckers work for other people. It's cool to see, uh, what do you call it, FTR with all those fucking championships. But then that tells me that they're a better team than your tag team champions. And you don't even allow them to rock their tag team champions for AEW. They should have the AEW champions. Yeah. Why not? Who has them now? Uh, uh, Swerve in your glory. Swerving, um, right. Right. They, and what have we done with them lately? They just challenged the acclaimed for yeah. some reason. Well, that's because they came to save Daddy Ass, and <laughs> he's an ass man. <laughs> save his ass man. But yeah, this but is what they, I'm they, saying. they should have they should have kept everybody in house and uh-huh. built their whole thing. Because uh-huh. what you did was you built a wrestling organization that is using. For essentially using other people's shit, uh-huh. yeah. you got the Ring of Honor thing in your in your organization. Yeah, Tony Khan bought it, but that's not his. You got New Japan coming in. That's not his. Triple A. That's not his. Like, where's yeah, but, your shit? You know, you know. To be honest, like FTR should be on a world tour, and AEW should be documenting it. Like every week on Dynamite, instead of for having them do singles matches for some reason. Show a vignette of them winning, of defending the Triple I titles or the fucking Ring of Honor titles somewhere. So that way we could keep up with them. But they're not there. They're out doing some other shit. So when it's their turn to title to to it fight for right, the yeah. tag team titles in AEW, we know why they earned it. You know ah. what I'm saying? That's true. And I, I really do believe that, um, like, it, FTR to me is the greatest tag team. I love Swerve in their glory, but do I feel like they are the best tag team out right now? No, even if they have the titles. 
And I love me some Keith Lee. I love me some Swerve. I really do. And just to let you guys know, Swerve was never really, Swerve was not the original part of Hit Row. So for all you fanboys out there that's fucking talking about, oh, Hit Row is not the same with that Swerve. Oh my God. Well, Swerve <laughs> wasn't part of the original three. He was just added on to that. So, uh, can I say go fuck yourself. I, I, know, I know I'm not personally attacked in this. I don't give a shit, but Hit Row doesn't seem like it belongs. I'm not saying that they're good or bad. I'm just saying, watch it Friday Night Smackdown. Place. They broke out into a fucking rap song, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? No, see, no, that's that's because of bad creative. But the fact that they were able to get the rhymes all together compared to, um, remember when Naomi and and this girl tried to sing? Oh, somebody call my mama. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, at yeah. least, yeah. at least they were in sync with their lines. And you're absolutely right. That part of of them singing and doing a hip hop concert and shit like that, that didn't belong. Mm. But them as a trio belongs because they I, all I the vibe. And I think that we just need more time to remind ourselves why Hit Row is so good. You know, I think they would have been better on Raw because for for, for me, because I don't watch SmackDown that often because, you know, we do the Tone the Show show. But I feel like SmackDown is Roman Reigns show and they have some wrestling. And like then if, the rest- if it was... Yeah, if it was like Roman Reigns and then just a bunch of fucking jobbers wrestling, SmackDown doesn't change. But remember, this keeps in mind. We're not only changing SmackDown Raw, we're changing NXT. Delgado is coming. Yeah, All that, right? I can't wait for that yeah. to come up. And when Delgado comes, remember, they had one of possibly the best feuds with Hit Row in NXT before Hit Row got called up to the main roster first. And I think you add that dynamic of one faction versus another faction, especially when it's still kind of for rush, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. It might be, but I'm... Hit Row has a lot to prove to me because Top Dollar talks a lot of shit for somebody I've never heard of before. And for somebody, from my point of view, is only around because they've put Swerve in there. (laughs) Uh, Top Dollar for right now just seems like a big dude. Yeah. there's, There's nothing about Top Dollar that screams wrestler or special. You know what's funny? I'm going to lay. If you're listening to this, this is for you. Top dollar seems like WWE's hook. Wow. <laughs> this wow. is for you, Lay. <laughs> hook needs to brush up on his mic skills, wrestling and ability skills. It also needs a little touch up to it. However, um, you leave Hook alone. Okay, we're sending Hook. <laughs> you leave my baby boy alone. You leave, <laughs> you leave my baby boy from from Red Hook alone. He's not even from Red Hook, but his name is Hook. So therefore, he's from Red Hook. So go fuck yeah. yourself, Joe. <laughs> you go fuck yourself. Hey, hook alone. <laughs> Say hey, Hook. I'm... <laughs> I'm send me Hook. I'm right to my front door, please. I got dollar bills too. Hey. I'm better than that bitch. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> With the look at the end, the little. <laughs> I, I got the plum ready for you, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and on that note, <laughs> we went. We went a half hour over. You know, son, I feel I'm starting to feel like this show needs to go a half hour over time with all the shit we talk. Sometimes it really does. No, it really does. It's just like, you know what it is? Uh, it, sometimes uh, I get to on here too late. Uh, this nigga show ends up arriving normally at this time. You know, just, just, it, there was just a lot. There was a lot to cover. 
Um, for those yeah. who've never checked Battle Club Pro, please do yourselves a favor and double, just hit them, find them up on Instagram, look up Battle Club Pro, look up all the great wrestlers that was on there. Shout out to Willow Nightingale, shout out to Brooke yeah. Valentine, shout out to uh, Ringleader Midas and Blazing Lion, Ham Wrestler, Steve Benya, uh, Jordan Lee, um, Savannah, uh, everybody and Jobber yeah. Tears podcast. Yes. Y'all niggas are the best. Janelle is dope. Sir Wilkins is dope. Yeah. Mr. Black, the wrestler. Yo, yeah, Mr. Black, Mr. excuse me, the referee. Mr. I Mr. Black, you cheated. You cheated, Mr. Black. You fucking cheated. Prolific should have won that shit. Nah, like, you think you was gonna? You really think that Jabba Tears was gonna lose their own shit? <laughs> Shut the fuck up! <laughs> Get the fuck out of here! That was the smoothest cheating I've ever seen in my life. That was the best thing ever. <laughs> best thing ever. Hey, you shout out to the ref. <laughs> and one more thing: if you recognize Gigi from some ten years ago, you're too late. Shut the fuck up about it. Yeah, Word. don't be a creep. Don't, don't be, be a, a creep. creep. Don't be that asshole. Yeah. Yeah, don't don't make me fucking block you in real life, you <laughs> That would be good. Yeah, I, right? <laughs> like, yeah, no, we're done with this conversation. Block. <laughs> Turn around oh, and be like, what are you still doing here? I just blocked you. I just fucking Word. blocked you. <laughs> Go over here. Just like, delete. <laughs> Shit, we're going to have to start doing that. <laughs> Next time we're there, somebody's creepy. Delete, delete this man. Boo this man. You got to. Oh, the the chat wants to know if you got TikTok, Gigi. Go fuck yourself, <laughs> Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> Go fuck that, yourself. That's her TikTok name. Go fuck yourself, official. Go fuck yourself, official. <laughs> it's, yeah, it, it says official. <laughs> and because y'all niggas follow my Instagram, it's official sixty nine. Because you know we got to be dirty up in this bitch, right? You know. Nice. We ain't dirty and, and, this podcast, but we're dirty. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 for the rest of the people that want to know, what's your MySpace? Oh, go <laughs> fuck yourself. What, uh, what about nine. Friendster? You on Friendster? <laughs> what's what? your AOL? What is that? What's <laughs> my aim? I'll let you know what's my aim. I'll give you my aim. <laughs> Y'all want to know my Blackberry shit too? <laughs> what's your pager number? What's your pager? <laughs> your BBM. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. What's your two way? Remember the two ways? The two way. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> Roll me, like, what's your email? Pro <laughs> is like, yeah, that's funny. But what's, for real, what's your email? What's your email, man? What's your email? You got a P.O. box? You got a P.O. box? <laughs> yeah, man. So, yo, what we learned, don't be a creep. <laughs> and go follow everybody that Gigi just mentioned, plus everybody right. else that's out there. Also, go, go support yourself. your local. Uh, yes. Go support your local indie wrestling scene because apparently Word. it's a lot of fun Word. if you haven't been. Word. That's it. And, Next and, time you you coming with us, Cap. That's it. Yeah, for real. Yo, I would have went this time had I had known. It was it, it was it was tricky. This one, this one was tricky. Oh, yo, listen. We gotta see. We got. We got. We got. We saw the. Th which one did? <laughs> Gigi Willow Nightingale is she thick or she juicy? Because to me, she fits in both categories. But which one is she in the? She's thick. She's I don't thick. Know. All right. So we saw yeah, thick yeah. and Gigi, but uh, it's thick and Gia. But we gotta see thick and juicy next time. <laughs> we gotta. Well, see we're gonna official. see them. We're gonna see yeah. them. And then we're gonna go right. ahead and call out the the Dirty Heels podcast because they want to go ahead and uh, decide to fuck with Kenny. You can't fuck with Kenny because Kenny's part of the Knucklehead podcast too. He's part of the Knucklehead network, y'all. That's you right. You can't fuck with that's Kenny. That's right. That's it. And you the, fuck with Kenny, you fuck with us. That's right. And as the tallest exactly. man in podcast history, Toey Two Tolls tags. You got yourself a problem now, son. You got yourself a problem. <laughs> I had to put the accent in there. And on that note, <laughs> and on that note, it's your friendly neighborhood knucklehead signing out. Peace, everybody.